Hello everyone, McCall here. Thank you for tuning in to Star Trek Adventures Nighthawk. Part 2, which finds our crew members ha are on the planet and what was initially a peaceful first contact turned into a hostage situation now on both sides. I'm sure that the captain can explain it better in the captain's log. So without further ado, please, Captain Singral, take it away. Oh boy, with great, great pleasure. <laughs> Cap <laughs> Captain's log, supplemental. The Nighthawk now finds itself in a major crisis. In violation of the Prime Directive, Commander Bashir has taken it upon himself to reveal himself to the Scorpi. This has led to a sequence of events that le lead directly to our exposure. I have beamed a few of the Scorpi present on the planet into stasis in hopes of removing their memory engrams while the situation is still recent. The away team, however, is now in grave danger. They have been taken into custody by planetary authorities, and among those they include Lieutenant Commander Helsing, Chief Medical Officer Koax, Togi, and Rani. I must work with great haste to secure the away team and hopefully begin to repair the damage to this fractured world. End log. Okay. Uh, so we're going to cut down to the folks on the planet side who are still being tr uh, carried under heavy escort by several half-men ha or half-human, half-scorpion creatures known as the Scorpi. Uh, you are being dra brought into a... Uh, you're being transported aboard a large flatbed hover truck. Um, your weapons have been confiscated, but you have not been bound or otherwise restrained. Um, it would be a... Uh, it would be roughly a four-hour trip back to the consulate city, where you will be meeting the High Proctor. Um, does anybody wish to talk, speak, or do anything other than that before the trip begins? Well, I was with the, the head priest talking before everything kind of went haywire there. Yeah. Um, am, I, am I still with him, technically? Or am I captured? Um, to, to the best of my knowledge, the captain has only beamed aboard the Scorpi, so you guys are still all on planet. Oh, yeah, no, I was just like you said, me and the head of the, 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 the priest, Scorpion, were, yep. like, were like walking together, and like when behind us, everything was kind of going down. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, so um, the priest, whom I believe was named Virilin, um, or the priest technician obelisk guy, was a... Oh, I apologize, one second, while I actually display the... Switch the stream over to the right layout. Oh god, it's all gone to hell. What the hell is going on here? I'm sorry, folks small technical difficulties while I get the stream overlay fixed because that is how I am as a GM. Uh -huh. Everything's still broken. Um, sorry Twitch, I will be right back. I just have to restart stream. <laughs> It knows this isn't our normal day. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sorry, folks. We're back. Um, now, to answer Bashir's question. Um, yeah, so you were... Um, basically, how the roundup went is several of the obelisk guards came out, rounded all of you up, and tossed you on the transport. Okay. Uh, the only one that would stand a chance would be Togi if Togi wishes to hide. Um, just because nobody knows what the heck Togi, Togi even looks like. Also, they don't know what the... Uh, what is Togi? What those people Togolam. are. Yeah. Good. Togolam. Togolam. Good, yep. thank God. And not to mention he was part of the grass when mm -hmm. we got taken care of taken so yep so i will allow toki to separate if that would be wise but i believe the rest were exposed and thus captured 
We'll keep him separated. Okay. I'll just put him out here then. <clears throat> so you are all brought along. Um, attempts for to make conversation with the guards is met with fairly terse, short responses. Not overly hostile, but they're basically waiting for the High Proctor to make his judgment. Uh, you see that several of them have been talking on cell phone style communication devices, uh, most likely communicating with people back at the city. Now, without further ado, you were brought to Consulate City, a large, a, agriculturally, a very integrated city into the large forests. Um, the curves are. The buildings are fairly low, aside from several central structures that um, reach above the tree lines. Uh, there is a significant amount of agriculture, uh, where the natural rivers have been diverted to uh, form in, impromptu wa wa ah, organized water systems. Uh, large large bridges allow for easy transportation, and without. And meeting you at the center of the largest structure is a gentleman with uh, he his uh he appears t if he was human he would be in his probably late fifties uh, his uh, scorpion half is primarily black with some ha with some painted on uh, symbols that you're not able to recognize uh, his tail is actually missing the stinger part entirely. Here for now, and he will. He strides forward rather casually, it must seem, but his expression is quite stern. And he's he without even pausing, he looks at uh, Commander Bashir. Uh, I take it that you are the one whom at, who attempted to make contact with Virilin before he v vanished. He says a bit, a bit harsher than he probably intends. Yes, I am in command of this group. I was here to discuss the uh, the preserver obelisk. Yes, the obelisk. Thank you. Mm. He nods. Well, that's our mo that is our society's most sacred artifact, and it is what has kept us safe from the cybernetic beings for the last several decades, and uh, other curious looky loos from time to time. Tell me, was Verillon actually able to get it working before he left, or was taken? No. I, that's why I made contact with him, because I have information, and he was going to take me to their ancient books uh, so I may investigate and possibly be able to help you. Right. He has a small grimace. Well, you can certainly understand if that, if circumstances have now changed. He nods to a uh, female individual who is wearing a decent amount of uh, body armor standing a respectable distance away. This is my chief of um, this is my chief of internal security, Miss Bassey. And as of right now, as long as you are in possession of our capture of our citizens, it only makes right sense that you are now prisoners of us. But that's the thing, sir. We aren't in possession of your citizens. Well, it doesn't take a lame person, a lame man, to figure out that you could not have arrived on this planet by accident. There's most likely one of those high flutin' starships in orbit. Uh, I haven't seen any, no one's reported any shuttles coming in or out, especially around the obelisk. So, that must mean that you have some sort of technology that either brings you down to the surface of one of those hidden shuttles, 
Or you can just simply take people away at the snap of a finger, like they say in those old fairy tales. Wouldn't that be something? Yes, yes it would. Ba- Miss Bassett, please see to it that they are well treated. We do not want to have a... We do not wish to further exacerbate the situation. In the meantime, I will attempt to see where my citizens have been taken to. If Verillan goes, if Verillan goes missing, that's going to cause a bit of a, cl- a riot there in the techno clergy. And we can't be having any of that. And with that, he is going to skitter on inside, and Miss ba- Miss Bassy is going to step forward. Uh, Miss Bassy strikes is actually a fairly short individual by Scorpy standards. Even at her full uh, peak, she's only roughly four feet tall, but she's carrying a fairly nasty-looking uh, barbed. A uh, pole arm of some sort that seems to be sputtering electric sparks at one end. Is Ronnie still carrying the glaive that she claimed was a trophy? Um, I believe that Ronnie was asked to br- uh, brought it down. Yes. Although the weapon was seized, so that's okay. what I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was going to yeah. ask. So it's in <laughs> possession of the guards at the moment, but. I look I, over to uh, um, Command, Commander of the XO and say, this is amazing. We come here to, the timing can't be worse than the luck of everything. We come here to try to meet the people that we've run into, Sally and two other Cajuns in space, fight the Draven off to try to save some of them and find out their ship's already destroyed and come to bring back this, an ancient, you know, what we think is a, a prized artifact for him, and we get arrested. This is amazing. Just now, loud enough I for agree. them to hear. Loud enough for them to hear. Just loud enough. Now, I'm s- uh, <clears throat> I'm going to do a horrible accent, but I think it's funny as hell. Now, I'm sorry. Did you just say the Draven? Dark-skinned fellows? Yes, white hair? A little bit crazy? Eh, I'd call him a little evil in my case. Uh, there's that too. They definitely sadistic, twisted. Yes. Yeah, I was briefed about them when I took this parole. Thankfully, I haven't seen them in about twenty years. Had we never... ran into them in a in a star cluster. It wasn't pretty. They used a a Scorpy transport as bait to try to take over our ship. Oh, them under hunted son of gun. Oh, well. Well, there's one less clan for you to for you to worry about. Right. And I thank you for it. Now, if and y'all could follow me, please. Yes, ma'am. She will take you away from the front courtyard. For at this point, you've gathered quite an audience of looky loos. At least forty individuals, all of different. Uh, shell carapace colors and general outfits leading from the fairly simple to the fairly um elaborate i should say uh the most of the guards at this point break off leaving you only with bassy and two others and one of the guards is has a large um tote sack over their uh, slung over their carapace which carries all the weapons that were seized They took our tricorders and all that stuff, too, didn't they? They did not take your comm badges, but they did take everything else. Because they're not... They don't know that comm badges are communicators. Right. They're thinking it's some sort of military insignia thingy. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, that's what it is. Uh, meanwhile, yeah. we are going to cut to the ship. You and Koox actually had yours on so the captain could listen, correct? Oh, yes. That's what I thought. Yeah, so it's been... Okay, so all of you guys are on planet. Okay, Captain. You are... 
on the bridge. Ah. Through here. Captain, on the bridge. Uh, it, who is currently on tactical? We don't have anyone there yet. Okay, well, um, it was one of the other. Locks got is my bull, bullion dude. Ah, the blue dude. Cool. Yeah, I can sit on tactical too if it's if we're not moving anywhere. That's fair. You can do that. Actually, that sounds like fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sonar. Or Urkin. Yeah. Um, Erkin, or uh, while you're at tactical, the communication signal begins to um, bleep. Looks like there is a wide band transmission being sent out to that. Ah, sent out from the planet's uh, main city. Uh, uh, Captain, we've got incoming message. Oh boy. Well, this is going to be fun. Is it audio? It is yes. indeed audio. <laughs> Well, let's hear it. Punchity punch, 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 punch. So, while you obviously can't see him, his voice comes through rather crystal clear. To any one of these, to any one of these Federation or Starfleet vessels that may be in our proximity of our planet, my name is High Proctor Weakus of the Scorpion Clave, and I would Please request the return of any citizens that may, any of the Scorpy citizens that may be under your possession. We are currently holding yours in possession, and I'm really hoping we can work out a simple trade. This need not escalate. We we have been ex we have been exploited in the past, and would wish to retain our independence. Well, try to get a location on the message, please, Ergen. Uh, working on it, sir. All right. Um, so momentum might be useful. So this is going to be a uh, insight plus uh, security or insight plus con. Either I think would work well here. Uh, this will just be a difficulty of zero because it's being broadcast at such a high power. Well, I'm obviously going to use Khan if you'd let me. Yeah. And the ship? Uh, ship can assist with uh, sensors plus communications. Or, sorry, communications plus security. Oh. Uh, and since he got us into this mess, Commander Bashir could track momentum this session. <laughs> Yay, de <laughs> Yay, delegation. <laughs> nice. Okay. So that's two successes and one complication. Whoops. Okay, so that's two momentum. And for the complication, at the moment, I think I'm just going to take the threat. See where this goes. Phew. It's not hard to figure out. Um, there is a large uh, broadcasting a uh, broadcasting array in the le location where they were, where the crew was taken on the planet. All right. Well, let me get a more detailed sensor scan there, if possible, to make. We already have eyes, on the, and we still have signals on the away team. Yes, you but do. I want to make sure. I want to more specifically make sure if we could grab all the Scorpy life signs that have been close, that have either been in direct or close contact with the away team, and I'd okay. still like the binars to keep track of them, since I did ask them to keep track of things in the immediate area last session before they all went to shit. You did indeed. Very well. So, um, who wishes to make the sensor science roll? Uh, we have a few science characters waiting in the wings. We I'll can take the ship. Uh, well, if the binaries are keeping track of everyone, then they could probably make the roll. That would make the most sense now, wouldn't it? So, if someone could please roll zero, one, zero, one, one. Uh, this would be an insight plus science check. And if you happen okay. to have sensor operations or stuff like that, that would make the most sense. Yeah. I'll go ahead and uh, okay. go for it. Yeah. And this oh, will be a exactly. diffi uh, difficulty of one. Ship got two. Ship got two. That's a good start. Not popping up. There we go. Mm -hmm. 20 sensors operations as their focus. Mm -hmm. One and one. Okay, that is four successes. Holy cow, that's mm. three momentum. 
Uh, so I think we're at a grand total of five, five momentum right now. Yep. That's enough to make us set for the session, I think. Okay, so, uh, 1011, uh, you guys notice that um, all the non scorpy life signs are being huddled together in a fairly spacious um, building, uh, slightly off center to the whole s to the uh, major city. Uh, there's roughly five scorpy um, keeping an eye on the perimeter. Uh, the major, the tallest building, which is a large spire type building, is currently housing uh, roughly 100 uh, different scorpy life signs, and the city itself. Um, Contains about, uh, let's see, I believe I said it was about a hundred thousand. Spread over actually quite a large geographical area. Uh, the Scorpio appear to believe in um, a sprawling civilization rather than a one that is far too tall. All right. Well, I got two things that I want to get done, and they're both a long-form task, so probably extended task slash work track may be required here. Okay. So the first thing that I'd like to do, at least while I still have the opportunity to, is to get a line on the chain of communication on this planet, since okay. it doesn't necessarily seem like they're too, well, they're not primitive, but you say they have, like, it's early, let's say, 19th, late 19th, early 20th century technology, effectively, correct? With a... It's sort of an anachronistic. So they they have some technology that appears to be enterprise era level stuff, such as hover okay. vehicles and communication systems. Um, but at the same time, their warp or their tachyon engine thing is just plain weird. So In any, okay, go ahead. Sorry. Um, I wasn't. I forgot where I was going to go with that. So please continue. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm just eager to get this under control. I'm sure it's Over. not. I'm sure what I was thinking of is not important. Uh, well, if possible, um, I'd still like to control all immediate uh, lines of communication coming from the High Proctor's office. Okay. And any other security and or political personnel uh, that may necessarily uh, be get be put may. Any other political personnel that would have been in contact with uh, regarding this matter? Okay. So I want to complete, not necessarily. I want to complete lockdown and just like and con con continuous monitoring. Uh, and that was hard to say. Mm -hmm. Continuous monitoring of uh, all the comms. Okay. Okay, that sounds like it's definitely going to be an extended task. Uh, let's see. That will be a difficulty of. Let's see, work track of, let's say, 12, resistance of 2, difficulty of 2, I'd say, and we'll have a magnitude of 1. And I think that's everything. I feel that I'm missing something, but I don't think so. Yeah, let's roll with it. So anything along the lines of um, security to break various encryptions if necessary, uh, engineering to figure out how their uh, system works, uh, could probably be persuaded to use science. I'll go ahead and put the SRAM on that. Okay. I can... I just didn't hear, but I'm definitely going to give him that order. Okay, I can roll... Fourth, the Shran, since. Okay. And if we have any other science personnel, the binars or otherwise, or any other security personnel, they can do so. Too. Okay. I can help out with security. Let's see. So, let's see. He doesn't have communications as a focus, but he does have cultural studies, which could work. Probably would be better if someone had communications. I have animal handling. One day we'll find a good use for that, <laughs> but not today. <laughs> we should have had him down today on the waiting. Today is not that day. Uh, what, is he going to ride the scorpion? <laughs> uh, Don't tempt me. Don't give him ideas. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Um, okay, so what we let's roll for Thran and see what he does. 
Uh, I think our only engineering supporting character that has communications is Rani. <laughs> she's, yep. uh, she's unavailable. Unavailable. Occupied. We and, use the word. Yes. The others are new and would thus need an active would need an activation, which couldn't happen this time. So I'll roll that. Well, the shrine managed to make one. Uh, what gets one point of momentum, so feel free to max that out. Uh, we'll roll challenge dice. He's got five, so seven challenge dice. Hmm. Not enough for breakthrough, but it is enough to extend the work track somewhat. Cool. Work track now is seven. Oh, six. No, 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 no. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Eight. There we go. Uh, the Shrine reports that the communication system is very difficult to break from a central location. It appears that their infrastructure is primarily a mesh style of communications. So, uh, so there is no real central node that things are broadcasting from. Rather, um, if one needs to make a communication from one device and to a, a destination device, then it will use any device in in between as a dynamic route. Well, um, if that... He thinks he can at least track things, but a general lockdown is going to be difficult. Well, if that's the case, then we'll use the probe that we already have in Atmosphere that we use to at least modify weather patterns mm -hmm. and we'll repurpose the communications buoy on that and turn it into a honeypot oh interesting okay cool <clears throat> so that is going to be a science or engineering test again we're going to have uh yeah so uh Thishran can do this again he's going to say captain it's not my specialty but i'll do what i can uh we might do a science check here. All right. The binars may still be able to take care of this. They do have the uh, focus for it. Binars would make a good fit for this. All right. What am I rolling here? I would say control plus science. Whew. Well, you're already maxed out on momentum. So mm. uh, if you could roll me six challenge dice please. Uh, yep, six challenge dice. Ooh. Okay, that is almost enough to break the... Uh, that's almost enough to end the task completely, but there, unless you spend momentum for resistance... What do you wish to do with that floating point of momentum? I will spend it. All right. So that is enough to end the work track, and um, between Thishran, the Binars, and the captain overseeing everything, the probe has been repositioned and has been turned into a sort of a, a man in the middle or a honeypot style of communication device. All right, well, now that that's done, I can now make sure, and I want to automate the Nighthawk systems just to continuously, if, if I don't want them to completely stop transmissions, but right. whenever a Scorpy would like to start discussing the nature of the away team, mm -hmm. I'd like it to be tagged and at least modified so it wouldn't at least completely get to its destination and we could still keep track of the individual they're trying to send these updates to. I uh -huh. want to just build this network to limit the continuously limit exposure here cool all right i like this idea we'll run with it all right we will um mr alec mm -hmm. so as you are you know fiddling around with the communications and the sensor arrays from tactical um you're not entirely sure what happened, but your eyes are drawn to an interesting geolo geological structure on the south, one of the southern continents. Okay. Um, it uh, was at first a mountain range, 
but then you blinked, there was a flash of white, and now it's reading almost as an entire uh, seam seems far too thin. Like, the entire mountain range is instead almost pure platinum. Runs the length of almost an entire continent. Um, Whoa. And just as soon as that happens, it, your, um, uh, your eyes blink again and it goes back to the and your sensors go back to the way they were. And I'm going to... I'd give you a determination and tag you... and tag your uh, touch by the... or your profits take the wheel. Okay. You feel... and you would feel compelled to check this out in person. Oh. Oh, okay. <clears throat> um, Captain, a moment? Please. But be um, quick. Uh, I'll bring him... Uh, please come back... come up to this console for a second. I wish to show you something. Sure. All right. <clears throat> See this mountain range here, runs the entire length of the of the continent. There's something up. It's not. I don't believe it's as it seems. Um, call it Bajoran instinct. And this is relevant to the current predicament because I I, I don't know to be honest, sir. <clears throat> um, but if the prophets are, if the prophets have signaled me that this is of a matter of importance, then I have faith in them. Um, permission to vanish for a moment, sir. Lieutenant, I respect your cultural beliefs, but right now we have a major situation with the Itaway team, and I need you, probably, to try to extract them. Uh, you, well, sorry, go ahead. Do you really feel like this excursion is necessary? I do, sir. Uh, there is something that I wish to discuss to you, uh, discuss with you further, but now is not the time. Um, I know this is going to sound weird, but I ask you to trust me, and I will be easily within transporter range if you need me. Well, um, believe me, as long as you don't have blue skin right now, I, I will trust you. Ooh. You are, beyond, <laughs> you are beyond kind and generous, sir. But you're not going alone. Oh, fully, fully understand. Take a few security officers with you if necessary, and take the Type XX shuttle, because I still do not want to be discovered here. We're not blowing anything up. Alec kind of beams with joy, and then when you say that, he's kind of, oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, with pleasure, sir. Uh, I will let you know the moment I find something interesting, and, I'll, and I will not dally any further than I need to. Lieutenant, if I do call you back... If necessary, you must imagine that it's obviously because it's an emergency and time is of the essence. So I apologize that if I'm going to put a little wrench into your like little adventure, but please, we remember we still have a duty to this crew. A hundred percent, sir. Um, uh, I I am most interested in this, and I certainly hope that if if my instincts are true, then there will be a great boon to us, the crew, and to our away team. All right, all right, you're wasting time now. Get to the shuttle bay, please. <laughs> he just beams out. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Uh, we are going to have a scene change, so lose one momentum. Uh, we okay. should only have a maximum of six. We can't have eight. So you're down to five momentum. Yep. And we are going to go back to the consulate city. So uh, the crew has been... Ra or you guys have been waiting in your accommodations for the last roughly three hours, and they are fairly spacious. Granted, the base of a scorpion is roughly four times that of a human, so naturally all accommodations are f larger in comparison, but they're not uncomfortable. However, they make no... Um, they make no... Ah, what's the word I'm looking for? you know you're being watched. Like, they're being obvious with it. There's guards uh, patrolling the perimeters. <clears throat> uh, you, you count about five of them. They're fairly easy to discern because all the Scorpius uh, carapace colors are different. Uh, so, despite their sort of brown coat style uniforms, they are definitely very noticeable. Um, might I ask what Togi has been doing, if anything? 
Oh, he's uh, probably still waiting outside of the complex that they're being left in, but still has his communicator badge, so he still has everything. He's still listening to the rest of the away team. So if they want to calm him for something specific, or they want to plan a jailbreak, otherwise he's just going to be here and keep watch. Fair enough. Uh, right. Okay. Um, best way to get them is just place them on the table and then delete them. Okay. Yeah. If you I'm find trying it. here, you can tell. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. So about three hours pass, and Bassie once again uh, wanders in, this time bringing along another individual who is... Yep, I'm going the wrong way. A darker-skinned individual with a, sort of a pale brown carapace, and his... Stinger tail has been replaced with what looks to be like a Swiss army knife style of <laughs> average of tools that could be um, deployed fairly quickly and he doesn't have to carry around a toolbox. Ah, these are the fellas. I see. She says the blue one over there seems to be in charge. Yes, I've I have heard I have read the briefings. Yes. You may leave. He sort of issues her, gives her a quick backhand shoe, shoe kind of motion. She stares at him icily and then just skitters away. My apologies, but you have been treated in such poor fashion. But is it true that you are actually here to help us with the obelisk? Correct. That's why I made our presence known. Oh, well, this could be a actually a good thing. My name is Orv my name is Ovis, and I am the one of the techno engineer or the ah I am one of the uh, techno clergy who's been safeguarding the technological secrets of the saviors. You may call me Bashir. Uh he sort of uh lowers his uh, thorax to the ground as a sort of a formal greeting. I nod and my antenna bend down. <laughs> he smirks ever so slightly. Just... So, what is the techno clergy? We are the key. We are the keepers of the secrets of the of the saviors. The saviors. Once we were saved uh, several several millennia ago from whomever created us. The Saviors left us with a large, uh, ah, a large cache of technological data that could be exploited once we are capable of understanding it. It was deemed, you know, early schisms determined that it was too dangerous for everyone to have access to such an advanced trove of knowledge, and so my guild was put in charge of safekeeping it and studying it and allowing for certain innovations to be taken once we have reached the level of technology. We call these individuals the preservers. It seems from coming across other of these obelisks they have gone throughout the galaxy, much older than any of the known races, that have transported and saved societies, also doing the same, giving technology to advancement, getting them ready, and protecting individuals throughout the galaxy. He nods. This strikes, this aligns with our understanding of the saviors. There, we are unaware, of course, what they look like. And over time, how we were created or who created us was lost. However, their technology and their message is passed along with my guild. You may have noticed several of the uh, star, our uh, star traders that have been plying the, uh, the spaceways. 
Oh, the solar ships. Yes, we have. Yes. It's amazing. Yes, I'm... I regret that that is a technology that we have yet to fully understand. However, the diagrams were quite intricate. Once we were able to fabricate such intricate technology at a nano level, nano, ah, at a molecular level, we were once again able to, or we were able to explore the stars. We have yet to figure out how the obelisk itself works, only how it has been used to protect us. We were hoping to that we were hoping we were able we could shut it down once the threat of those cybernetic beings had passed he looks warily at you guys i'm uncertain if we should now the borg have been gone for roughly 40 years um we are here exploring this area of space because of your protection and others on this area of space is our primary mission to find ways to protect others and gather technology and information if a threat as dangerous as the Borg appear again to be ready. So, it, so you are after the secrets of the Savior's obelisk. We didn't know it was here, and that's what, what it was until we came on planet. We had originally come here to meet your your people. We've run across them ourselves twice. However, both times the crews of the ships we found were were already dead. A sad fate. Those who, those of the merchants, or those of the Astral Merchants Guild, take on great risk uh, to bring stories of the Scorpi and uh, to bring to bring stories of the Scorpi to others, and to bring stories from others back here. Needless to say, I I am intrigued with your offer to assist. The my. Or the, the head of our guild, Virilin, was attempting to shut the moat down once again. However, it does not seem to be responding anymore. They were... We observed them seeming to start to activate it. My medical officer had tracked um, large outputs of power from it when they were attempting to examine the symbols. Um, but then, yes, it should just immediately shut down. And that's when I introduced myself and things went a little cross. Um, but I know we got incredible power readings from it when he was touching it. May I ask an off question? Today does seem to be like one of those days. <laughs> does your race have... How do I put this? Musical? Balance? Of harmonics? Of a tone? Of course. We have several. Uh, we are... Our culture is very rich with a ser with a large or diverse array of instruments. There are several who can sing. I am not one of them. To be... Let me lay my cards out on the table. One of the things that I have researched of these beings they speak in a musical-ish tone. Um, I can't... I know it's centered around your DNA and your lives, but if I may give you a hint and as an offer of peace, I can tell you that that might be the secret to unlocking it. He nods. 
this way is known to us. The uh, the data cache does include several um, what's the phrase? Uh, several phrases and musical uh, musical refrains that could be used to activate and deactivate. That is why we were speaking. That is why Virilin speaks aloud a, a prayer while activating and trying to manipulate the column. I the, see. Uh, in the last several. The last few times we have attempted to try this, there has been powered, but not enough. We fear that these obelisks might be dying, which is very distressing because the moat will ne does not appear to be uh, dissipating as it does so. If the mo until the if this obelisk continues to fault continues to falter, the moat shall forever increase endangering all of the planets nearby has there been any sort of reconciliation yet on either end of uh, this hostage situation <laughs> He glances behind him as um, Bassie sort of hops on all of her um, legs. Well, the High Proctor was about to send out a notice to uh, any ships that might be in orbit or within the system. Whether or not anyone's responded yet, she shrugs. I just simply cannot say. Because I and my team would be very interested, and again, we didn't get a lot of chance to investigate the obelisk um, at the time of our, my abrupt appearance. He said that you, that I possibly may be able to peruse your scriptures um, and maybe be able, that's what my original plan was to come this way to help with this to investigate the scriptures and see your ancient texts okay. and to see if i can find anything all right uh this is going to be a presence plus command test uh okay. difficulty of uh let's say difficulty of three to convince him why is everything gone I think I goofed around too much playing with that. <laughs> okay, come on. <clears throat> Thank you for getting rid of those. I was having a heck of a time. <laughs> Presence. Presence command, and if you have anything like diplomacy or negotiation or... I don't know, scorpion handling? Why do I not have animal handling? <laughs> <laughs> We're working when we need him. We need him. Proud and honorable, bold science computer expertise. Mm. No. No, can't pull anything out, even if I wanted to. All right. I will use a momentum, since we have so many. <clears throat> Oof. Okay. All right. That is only one success and one complication. Use two momentum to get rid of it. Okie dokie. All right. We're at two. <laughs> he uh, frowns and shakes his head. I'm sorry, but uh, that is not within my permission to give you access. I will uh, I will pu submit your request to the High Proctor. For what it is worth, I hope that we will work together. I hope so, too. I look forward to it. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, to get the cards out, you just click on the card and drag it onto the desk, onto the play area, and then just delete whatever's created. Okay, so... 
Okay. As he wanders past uh, Bassey, uh, while he makes no overt gestures, as soon as he is out of, um, uh, as soon as his back is completely to her, she sort of flashes him in a bit of an evil stare. Those two obviously have history, but who knows? Okay, Erkin. Mm -hmm. So you are taking the space the shuttle XX down, correct? Yep. Okay, I would like you to make a uh, helm operations test, please. Uh, okay. To fly silently, this will be a difficulty of two to avoid the occasional uh, um, ship uh, that is flying through the atmosphere. Uh, do you want daring or control? Uh, control, please. And the shuttle can assist, of course, with engines plus con. Uh, do we actually have five momentum? Or... No, you should have no, we two. Have no. Okay, uh, then I won't spend one yet. All right, and what was... Oh, you're in the other ship. Yeah, XX. Ooh, all right, Urkin makes it. <clears throat> and the ship was... Uh, engines con. Man, Ooh. it's like the game wants me to get harder on you guys. Okay. That's two more, mom <laughs> oh, two no. more momentum. Uh... <clears throat> uh, so, Erkin, you fly over a, a vast terrain of um, uncivilized desert terrain. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to relay what I'm seeing back up to the Nighthawk. Okay. Um, <clears throat> just in case the captain needs to have any more ideas about how we can get the crew out. Okay. Uh, the, the mountains sort of just jut straight out of the flat, sandy terrain. The uh, There's no rolling foothills beforehand. Okay. And the mountains themselves are f uh, fairly uh, rocky mountain-ish style. So very jagged. They appear to be quite young geologically. Um, no sign of, or there's very little sign of any habitation. You see a couple caravans far below, but you're able to avoid them for the most part. Or you don't think they see it. Why would they bother looking up? Um, <clears throat> civilization, oh, all in all, is pretty scant. Okay. Um, if you could please... Actually... Yeah, on the sensors looking to see if there's any mm -hmm. well, flat spots for landing and also if that weird uh, shift in reality and <clears throat> is visible again or if there's any notable flaws so the terrain uh, the terrain seems rugged and very few places to land a shuttle uh, however you're flying over um, as you are flying over some terrain uh, high up you see a flat uh, surface you see a fairly flat surface on top of a mountain peak that does appear to have been cut um, uh, as you get closer, um, if, as you get closer, your eyes are drawn to a s large symbol that appears to be engraved inside the, uh, for lack of a better purpose, potential landing zone. Mm -hmm. What is weird is that it is, it is a match to the symbol of your, uh, religious earpiece. <clears throat> the hairs stand up on the back of my neck, like... Uh, huh, okay. Well, I will land here then. Seems reasonably safe. Okay. Um, and I'll tell the, the security detail that's with me. is like, nobody shoot until we get shot at. I don't know what's down here. It might be weird. But it's probably not hostile. And be polite. Whatever you do, be polite. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, the shuttle lands, and I'm assuming you activate its um, passive camouflage? 140%, yes. Duly noted. There is a... Uh, upon disembarking, you see a... Sort of... Uh, uh, a curving ramp uh, descending into one of the mountains. 
uh, obviously scaled to so that a Scorpy can traverse it comfortably. It would be no no problem whatsoever for you and your mm, bilegualism. No, that's not right. Um, <laughs> your bipedal. bipedal. That's it. Your bipedal nature. Uh, Urken, uh, <clears throat> tap the combat. Urken to Nighthawk. Nighthawk here. Go ahead. Uh, just confirming you still have a lock on my signal. So far, so good. Okay. Uh, we'll be in touch, Captain. Okay. You come, you enter the, uh, you come in, you come down the, uh, the descending ramp into a cleft in the wall, which would be very easily hidden from most casual sight, most casual passers-by. Even passing by air, you would not have noticed this just casually looking and the sensors might have even noticed this to be a just a s standard geographical anomaly. Uh, inside, there is a, a series of caverns. And these now that you're inside, uh, you pull out a tricorder and everything is reading platinum. Whereas prior, it was reading various shades of granite, quartz, limestone, and other, um, I think the term is igneous rock. <clears throat> GM's not a geologist. Please don't shoot me in comments. Uh, everything wow. in here okay. is mm -hmm. dusty. Um, do, a lot of it does not look like it has been trodden in a very long time. Uh, where's Erkin's toy? Here it is. And your footsteps echo and echo and echo. And this is very much like a, a cut. It's yes. not a. <clears throat> it, it, it's it's not a naturally occurring cave. No. Um, okay. Once you're within, a, once inside about ten meters or so, uh, you definitely see the work of ancient Minecraft. Mm -hmm. uh, so cut tunnels, um, old uh, suspend old uh, suspension beams made of uh, sturdy metal structure, and everything seems to be leading you into a centralized uh, enclave. Uh, is there any illumination? Or is it... uh, there would be sconces for torches, but those torches are currently not lit. <clears throat> okay. Uh, mm. Yeah, continue forward. Eyes and ears open. All right. Motion to the security detail to keep it down. Mm. All right, security detail follows you in. <clears throat> the uh, approximately 150 meters inside, long past all the natural light. Uh, there's a small glow coming from a pool of um, bioluminescence, uh, bioluminescent algae that seems to be uh, sh shining a pale blue-green light to a fairly large humanoid figure. Uh, this figure is... This figure currently stands approximately 10 feet tall. Ah. Uh, bipedal. And... Oddly enough, most of it is carved out of a, out of rock, not platinum. Uh, the only thing that's platinum is its left leg. And it appears to be holding some sort of spear and shield. In a sort of a... Like a defensive posture. So its shield is raised to, def to defend the chest and head. And the spear is pointed straight out at 90 degrees. Yeah, sorry if you if you said it. And I just missed yep. it. Is it in front of the pool or next to it? Or um, the it is behind the pool. Oh, behind the pool. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, does it still does it have the layer of dust on it that everything else does? Uh, the rocky parts do, but the leg does not. The leg sh catches and reflects the light very well. Okay. And your uh, one of the security guards quickly raises uh, her uh, phaser at a potential movement that has caught the life that has caught your their tricorder <clears throat> um, easy ensign uh, we're we're not at risk here hmm. um, a, um, a female voice echoes throughout the chamber at first no sign of its source no you are quite the opposite actually 
This is a most revered day. It has been spoken of for several millennia. Uh, hello? I don't quite understand what you mean. Uh, we call this Tuesday. <laughs> the, the female Scorpi, who appears now to be in her uh, mid to late 60s, with long hair, doesn't look like it's been cut in ages, uh, and her um, white carapace has been daubed with uh, religious symbols, <clears throat> and she carries a fairly large, if somewhat dusty, tome in her, ha her hands. No, it, it is the day that the Wayfarer arrived on our planet. You know of me. Well, we... I know of the Wayfarer. I know of the Wayfarer. Most have long debunked it as a myth told by children. Or a myth told to children to, s to give them hope in the darkest of times. That the Wayfarer will come to awaken the Guardian and will save us all from something. She just... Uh, <clears throat> is this the Guardian? And I gesture to the... Oh, her... Statue. She barks... Uh, the bark of laughter echoes down the hallway. No, 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 this is only where the young ones who are chosen to become the next waiting monk are educated. Uh, uh, I have taken... Educated. Yes. I have uh, taken on this duty, and it pleases uh, me to be the one to have met you. Uh, forgive me, I, I'm fairly new at this being a, a, the wayfarer. Um... But does it involve removing one's leg? She barks again. Oh, the the Wayfarer was always told to be a curious sort, but this is quite charming. Uh, the, the Wayfarer wishes to know all that surrounds him, like uh. his most um, attempt at at Kai and Kai isms. Uh. She shakes her head, still smiling away. Oh, child, you are a para... You are... You're a... Ah, your status has only just been revealed, hasn't it? Oh, yes. Uh, not about, I think, two or three uh, weeks ago? Um, months, actually. It was happened just oh, months, sorry. Yeah, it happened just yep. before the time jump. So, yeah, right. about three months. Um, I'm still trying to absorb it. There's... Uh, the prophets have been few and far between in their enlightenments as of late, and I find myself more entangled in my duties as a Federation Starfleet officer than I do of a follower of the prophets. She nods. Ah, yes. As a society that is so focused on guilds and technology and the other ancients who have interfered in our life, I can certainly relate. I must admit the amount of information that has been passed down to me was as, as fairly scant as well. Only ancient prophecies and stories. And I must admit to feeling uh, skeptical when I was first taught at a young age. But as I grew older I and I studied this place, learned from it, I do believe that it could come to pass. Please, honored matron, I would be... <coughs> Excuse me. It's the dust in the cave. <coughs> most um, most gracious of any teachings you may have, so I may learn further about what it means to be the wayfarer. Uh, she shakes her head at you calling her matron. Uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a funny term. Anyways. I wish I, could Im I wish I could impart more. All I know is that the warrior will be... Rewoken re to face what uh, some dark evil that those I believe you refer to them as the prophets had once sealed. And if this evil were to, or dark force were to arise again, that this, that the warrior would be awakened to save it, or save us from it. And she. Uh, she passes you a very thick tome. Um, Thank you. The pages are ancient, dusty, and very, very worn. 
do be careful with that. And she's, she clacks with her uh, lower claw appendages. As you can see, it's our only copy. <laughs> uh, the dark forces entrapped the, upon this world. Do they have anything to do with this these obel this obelisk thing that? Oh, oh, you mean the saviors? The saviors yes. and their obelisk? Yes. No. Um, as far as I'm, <laughs> as far as I'm aware, the pro these prophets uh, had their influence on this world long before the saviors chose it to save us. And as she glances around, oh, as as I'm sure you could tell, the platinum in this mountain is quite an unusual formation, is it not? Uh, unlike anything I'd ever seen before. Mm. As she taps to the platinum leg of the statue. We believe that this is some... We believe that this range might actually be part of it. We're not entirely sure how. It's why this continent is primarily um, devoid of Scorpy life. We don't want to be around this thing when it wakes up, because it's going to make a heck of a mess. Understandable. I shall take your teachings in stride and, and meditate to seek the prophet's wisdom on this and gain any insight I possibly can. Um, I am more than willing to help. This sounds like a matter that I shall have no problems um, discussing with my captain and gaining his favor. Um, otherwise, I shall remain behind if the ship leaves. Uh, she nods. Oh, that is the the way of the wayfarer is to travel. You have gained insight from this location, but surely there must be others. After all, this is only one leg. Oh, and it's like it's like the light bulb goes off in Erkin's head. Oh, I see what you're getting at. I may be young, but I sure am naive. Uh, <clears throat> she smiles is there any and way shake to, her head. It, is there any way to communicate with you once if once slash if I leave the planet? Of course, child. There is. I'm. We may be a small, isolated band, but we still have modern technology. We have communication sense. We have communication centers, and I can certainly give you my contact prefix. Of course, until that moat is brought down, communications might be difficult. But she shrugs. I'm sure that will sort itself out in time. Yes, totally. Um. Well, look at the time. Uh, I'll go over and, and study the pool and see if there's anything like, you know, uh, sort of quiet, quietly seek Prophet's guidance on this. Maybe they can come in here at any moment. And... <laughs> okay, roll me um, roll me insight. No, actually roll me reason plus science, please. And if you have history or stuff like that, that would work here. Or I have none of those. Eh, I thought you worked on an archaeology dig at some point. Uh, well, I have a, uh, ancient technology. I'll allow it. Woohoo. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to spend one of those momentum that we acquired because, yeah. Sounds like a good idea. Uh, this will be a difficulty of two. Okay. Having a heck of a time with D20s or Roll 20s pop ups today. Just one of those days, man. I know. Okay. Reason plus it. science. Go away. Mm. Okay. Mm. The, the symbols seem familiar, but it's one of those things at the back of your mind that's going to take a lot more figuring out. Um, oh. You take a couple. Uh, scans with the tricorder, and that's really all you can do at the moment. Okay. Hmm. Do you know where I might find other parts of the warrior? Well, we do know that 
it is well recorded that part of the warrior is inside that bloody the bloody scar that part that part's well known the the face of the warrior is to always watch the tear to ensure that the darkness does not escape oh okay is that where the is that where Cerberus station is that's where server station is yes very interesting madam um, I know the place quite well I've been there a few times but that but <clears throat> did not see any trace or, or hear anyone mention of such things um, uh, GM interposition here I'm sorry it okay. wasn't hugely important to, to Nighthawk but there is an object inside the Carceri Nebula known classified as Janus 3 which is a platinum head the size of Charon, a.k.a. one of Pluto's moons. So, yes, you are aware of it. Okay. <clears throat> oh, yes, okay. I do know of what you speak of now, but... Uh, <laughs> it wasn't important at the time. Or, sorry, it wasn't significant at the time. Merely yeah. a rock formation. You know, the size of a moon looks like a human head. Yeah, I don't see it being important. Well, at least, it wasn't important to Nighthawk, so apologies for that. Ominous <clears throat> look, it's Unicron! <sighs> yeah, moving on. <laughs> uh, madam, I do, uh, words cannot express my gratitude to this. Um, as the Wayfarer, I feel an immense burden now to fight the dark evils that be with this, for, uh, with this warrior, and, I, and, I, and I, I'm overwhelmed by the sense of duty she's she smiles a bit tiredly well don't feel too overwhelmed after all apparently this great evil has been held at bay for and she shrugs who knows i certainly don't but i'm sure another couple days isn't going to see the uh its release i would hope not i've been here since i was about eight stellar cycles old now look at me ah oh. The young ones are not going to believe this. I met the Wayfarer. She smiles and pulls you into a bit of an awkward hug. <laughs> Consider uh, she clacks does she her. Have a, yeah. Does she have a stinger? Uh, no, she does not. It has been removed. Oh, good. I relax a little. Yeah, the claw, the claw appendages sort of wrap around as a s second set of limbs, and they sort of clack happily until she realizes it's making you rather uncomfortable. The security detail is looking at each other rather confused. Uh, I provide with her a selfie. <laughs> okay. For, uh, you know, for her scrapbook or whatever she's into. <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Wayfarer was here. Okay. <clears throat> um, we will be in touch, honored matron. She nods silently. Now go. Don't, you don't have, believe me, I'm going. You have other obligations that are a bit more pressing, I should think. Yes. Um, you know, most of the crew is kind of locked up. See ya. Uh, Thanks for all the information. I will read these books thoroughly and return it upon my return. Or before I depart. There was what, that's exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> Very well. And with Again, that... The shuttle screwed off. Okay. Uh, Lieutenant Erkin returning to Nighthawk. Okay. So while, uh, while all this is happening, uh, there is a, sm a slight increase in the amount of quote-unquote suspicious traffic traveling around the uh, communication network around the uh, central around the um, uh, around the city there uh, captain most of which appears to be between security forces and the um, high proctor as well as um, powerful figures from several guilds that you have come to learn um, the techno clergy is obviously one of them but there's also the astral merchants guild uh, the uh, the security forces 
and several other guilds that I haven't bothered coming up with names yet. The, the topic of conversation at the moment is how long do we wait before we attempt to uh, get more aggressive? My entire plan has gone to shit. <laughs> oh? I, no. Well, not necessarily, but speaking as not in character, obviously. I'm, I'm upset out loud that oh, every did, time yeah. I try yeah. to get a handle on it, it just gets yeah, worse. On the bridge, I, I, I'm sorry, did I, miss, did I miss... I may have misunderstood your intention, and so I may have gone down the wrong branch of the FUBAR tree. Um, so... I should say then that the traffic is attempting to make its way through, but is being tagged and has several interferences. Um, however, that right. is not going to stop people meeting face to face. Of course. All right. Well, that makes it much easier. <laughs> My apologies. I miss. I misinterpreted what you had done before. That's okay, on me. So I, w I I get to line out enough, and I get to change cannon. I'm yeah. I'm okay with that. <laughs> you know, if the GM gets something wrong, the GM is human. Despite his desires to be Q, that has not happened yet. Well, I still have a bunch of Scorpion stasis that I still need to make sure I can get their memories reliably erased, and I want to make sure I can do that without damaging them before I return them to the High Proctor. Correct. So, so I'd like to try to take care of that. Okay. Uh, so the captain's going in to go to, to Sick Bay. Um, sadly, Coox is on planet, so who is currently in sick bay? Let's find out. L-M-N-O-P-Q-R-S. All right. Captain's in sick bay. As apparently is Yas Zonar. And where are all the medical personnel? Yes, the security. Oh, yes, the security. That's right. Oh, yes. Yes is there to make sure that the uh, Scorpi stay under. Okay, we have a Miss Joy. We have Zat. And we have Head Nurse Zin at the moment. Okay. And they wander. You wander in, Captain. Are you here to check on the pri Are you here to check on the prisoners or patients? <laughs> yes, I am. What's the progress in actually being able to modify the memory engrams? Well, since Scarlet Joy actually has memory specialist as a um, feature or as a f focus, well, sir, they are. Aside from the uh, additional lobes required to control their uh, lower body functions, their pr thought process appear to be fairly similar to that of most humanoids, with the exception of Bolians, of course, and she looks over at Zot. No offense. Zot bows in contrition. <clears throat> so it should be a fairly simple en uh, engram resequencing. All right. Well, I want to make it clear: these people are our guests. It's unfortunate in the manner in which they were transported, and it's an unfortunate situation that we got ourselves into. But I need to make sure that this procedure comes with very low risk of complications. Otherwise, I don't want you to attempt it. If okay. necessary, I will be here to assist. She raised an eye. You, sir. Well, uh, she catches herself and realizes that questioning the captain's orders as a, an ensign? I don't actually have a rank for her. As a lowly medical officer is not her place. Yes, sir. It should be a fairly straightforward p procedure since we're not being shot at or there's any time crunch. I believe she actually has the rank of lieutenant. Oh, does she? But, oh. uh, okay. yeah. Still well, not a place to question the captain. In that case, get started. If you do run into any such complications, there is an alternative mode that I have in, in terms of 
trying to get them to remember a different version of events. Yes, Captain. Very well. We shall start with their leader. And she pulls out a sonic drill that makes a very high-pitched whine as she brings it along their scalp. Very well. Let's start. And with that, we are going to head back to the planet. Oh, I don't get to roll for this? Do you want to? <laughs> no, uh, I'd rather not risk it, but... <laughs> automatic success. <laughs> Before we... Uh... I, this is going to just take some... T- this could either be one of two ways. One, it will be automatic. It will just take a few scenes to take to happen. Or you could roll for it, have the, and it will go faster. With the chance that, of failure. In that case, if you're going to just give it to me like that, how kind. I will roll for it. All right. Fair enough. Uh, so someone, if someone could please roll Scarlet Joy. Can uh, ship ass- assist? Uh, this is not going to be a ship assist, I'm afraid. Uh, this is going to be captain assist because captain wanted to. Indeed. So, yeah. Uh, so Scarlet will be rolling control medicine and the captain will be also rolling control medicine. Does somebody have joy? We all have joy. Yeah. I'm happy. Uh, if you got her, good. Yeah, I got no. her. Control medicine. Uh, I should say this will be a difficulty three task. I. So, okay. Can't, nothing from the captain. Oh. I totally forgot oh. that I have combat medic, actually. Well, that's a thing. That's a thing. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's good news. Nobody died yet. Wow. No complications. Thank God. Two 19s and an 18. Wow. Okay. They were close. They were no. close. I could spend one momentum to cause the recipient to regain points of stress equal to the number of the character's medicine. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah. So, and because this is her first time, uh, Miss Joy does not have a value. So, um, so um, Vrillin's lower carapace uh, sort of goes into a bit of a seizure uh, for about 10 seconds before Miss Joy rushes and applies a enough uh, tranquilizers to trank a horse to cause the patient to fall asleep again. Uh, sorry, Captain, I was unaware of this particulars. I was unaware that this node down here controlled their uh, thorax and their invertebrate stuff. This is going to take some time, sir. I'm sorry. Well, I'll leave it in the rest of your capable hands, then. Clearly, there's somewhere else I should be. And I feel like my presence is probably going to make things a little more difficult for you. I can understand you're stressed. As one of the other, as a Mr. Zinn comes across, wipes her brow, and sends you a quick telepathic message of, Yeah, sir, at least she's usually much better than this, sir. I'm just in my head. I'm I'm just gonna scoff back at him, not in terms of a disdainful one, but just I had difficult times, et cetera, et cetera. I have no time to deal with this right now. Fair enough. Okay, we are going to go back to the planet <clears throat> um, now. Does anybody wish? So another few hours will pass. Does anybody wish to do anything in those hours? Doesn't sound like it. Is, oh. Is, oh, go ahead. Go on. No, go. Um, I was wondering, is Bossy still Bassy? Bossy? Bassy? Yep. Bassy still in around us? Oh yes, she is definitely keeping an eye on the most interesting thing to happen to the to this planet. Yeah, if I can ask you, you. Know, the Draven, um, when we encountered them, you mentioned them a, little, a little while ago, it looks like they, when we captured their ship, it looked like they had been doing experiments, not just on people, but on Scorpy as well. Is that a common thing? It's, it's not uncommon that they have 
It's well known that they often have taken us for use of slave labor. We may look small and compact, but our uh, lower thoraxes are capable of great, great feats of physical strength, you know. However, I was unaware that they were attempting to genetically manipulate us even further than we already are. They had one that was a member of their party. It didn't look to be totally voluntary, but he had been enhanced. In fact, two of our crew members here actually had to fight him to help save the ship. Uh, such a shame. That's a real shame. I mean, using that for slavery, that's one thing. At least he can sort of be respected at that, that they value you for something. Not that I value being chained up and told to lift something or push something. Anyways, but to be told that we are ge our genetics are complicated enough and to take that even further? She literally spits on the ground. Distasteful, I say. Absolutely distasteful. It was, uh, their ship was definitely a, a shop of horrors. Still, I do appreciate it that you were able to deal with them in such a quick, uh, decisive manner. Men's... Now, Skitters would was still... We captured Skitters alive. Yep. Uh, you did, but he was turned over with the rest of them. Or set free, I suppose, was the best. Let, well, let, let go with the rest of the Draven afterwards. Oh, Cerebus released them? Well, there was... An ex I was hoping to do a session on this, but it would have just been a heck of a lot okay. of talking and not anything being done. Okay. Uh, so, basically, an ar a uh, peaceful existence was um, allowed where they were given their ship, uh, had all their weapons and cruel scientific technology taken away, basically told to get out. Cerberus had no, they had, Cerberus had no jurisdiction to keep them, and you guys had basically taken away all their teeth, so to speak. Oh, uh, okay. I'm glad I don't know any of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of those post-game things I probably should have mentioned. Apologies. Uh, no problem. Higher level command and diplomats. Mm, quite. All right. Um, it's about this time that High Proctor Weakest comes through uh, with two Scorpi for escorts. Now, I'm sorry to do this again. But once again, it's been about, it's been several hours and there's been no response from your ship and crew. So I'm hoping that one of you getting on the horn might do something to speed things up a little. And he once again points to Bashir and points to Helsing. All right, you two seem to be the ones who know what's going on around here more so than me. Come with me, please. Okay. What? We'll follow you. Oh, kind of talk as we walk through the building. Mm -hmm. This is nice architecture down this long hallway we're walking down. Why, well, thank you. You know, many, many spacefaring civilizations look at us as backward folk. Quite frankly, we probably look like it from time to time. Well, from the ships that we've seen, it's d definitely a different type of propulsion than what what we use but there are other races that use type of s sail technology so it's nothing to be thought of as lower just different mm -hmm. yes we had mentioned we had met several other species that do use a i believe it's something called antimatter devices that allow you to travel faster than speed of light however they do use the chemical they require a use of the uh, power crystals that we are forbidden to touch on our planet, so we can't mine any of it. So we forbidden use the... to touch. Well, yes. Uh, the uh, the scriptures say that this um, dilithium is to be left in to be left in peace and intact to ensure that the obelisk can maintain a safe and stable. Oh. So the yeah, obelisk uses dilithium. Okay. Well, for our original scans, 
showed that this planet was concentrated in dilithium. My engineering is just a little bit. I'm just big dumb security. I'm supposed to keep my people safe, but I mean, I'm a computer guy and haven't touched a car in my life. But even I know gasoline makes things go. But yeah, ha. that's about my knowledge of lithium. Fair enough. So he. So everybody's robotic for me. Oh, everyone's going robotic for me as well. Yeah. Let's. Yeah, I had the connection dropped under the red for me on Discord. Ooh. Let's jump servers. Sorry, stream. Be back in a sec. Um, More than needs the other. Save that. Okay, we are on central, and I'm still showing red. How are you guys? I'm oh. um, back to green. Okay. Uh, Let's give this a try and see what happens. Okay. So as we turn right down the corridor, I'll say as we you know, turning right down the corridor after walking 100 meters, hopefully the, <laughs> praying that somebody on the other end keeps a good track on. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the the architecture inside is again fairly wide uh, fairly tall ceilings and there's all sorts of uh, statues to various of or various uh, scorpi of note uh, they seem to have been lovingly crafted um, with fairly recent fresh coats of paint on them to show the colors of their of their clothing and their carapace uh, the floors are are marble or some other hard stone as your as your bipedal footsteps sort of um, match time to their uh, skittering and far more repeated uh, ticks on the floor as their uh, scorpion legs make contact. Uh, it's for it's a fairly baroque Gothic style in, inside, which is quite different to the fairly smooth and sharp lines on their exterior. Um, everywhere you see would be uh, frescoes, uh, stained glass, and other sites that are, or other works of art that make you feel that this is more of a church than a public office. See, seeing as Bossy is more, or Bassy is more secured, I feel more comfortable talking to her. Mm -hmm. um, do the, I, I mean no offense because we have similar things in our own cultures to the coloration of your scales and your carapace to know clans region of the planet you're from oh she she just shakes her head you know we have had some of our brightest minds trying to crack the genetic code to figure out what makes our what makes the colors of our carapace different i mean we can figure out hair genetics skin color heck even eye color but as far as our thorax armor, thorax color, it seems to just be whatever it wants to be. At least that's what the doctors and the medicines, those, the medicine guild tells us. Because the, uh, what was the color thorax of skitters? Um, skitters, I, uh, I'd have to dig that up. Well, i just going to assume it's or I'll just say it's orange. In, insert color because yeah. the the one scorpion that we ran into that the Draven had genetically enhanced was of the orange variety and didn't know if it was clan related that we could bring at least word back to his people. Nah, don't work like that. I'm afraid. Uh, understood. Do these augmentations of the thorax and thing, have that been all the way back to the time of your preservers or? Uh, is, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, have we always been half? <laughs> have we always been different from the torso down? Yes. Near as we can tell. As according to the scriptures, the pres the saviors discovered us somewhere, 
took pity on us and gave us a ch gave us a shot at an honest living. Don't know who made us. Don't know why. All I know is that we. All I know is that we're here. The the techno clergy and the history clan and all them others who actually have vested interest in making money off this stuff debate it live at least once a month on the broadcast networks. Never make any headway, but dang nation, do they come up with some cool phrases. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I understand relying on the kindness of strangers. Hmm. Yes. Well, that's why well, we do try to live up to what we think their expectations of us were. Maybe they just saw us have some... Maybe they just saw that we were good people that just needed a hand. That's what we try to be so friendly, but... just seems So people... far, that's all we've seen from you is, is has been kindness. And weakest uh, just butts and yes. And it would be nice if you showed us some kindness in return. Anyways, here we go. He opens a, a door to a large pulpit... Uh, the pulpit looks over an empty mass chamber, for lack of a better term. Um, looks like uh, about it could probably hold about a thousand scorpi uh, in its base. We happen to have one of the last... This would be our greatest uh, video communication center. If there is a ship around nearby, I'm hoping that they can at least see a full televised signal. And at this point, on the bridge, um, the, both Captain and uh, Erkin's ship, or Captain, on the bridge, you have just gotten word that Erkin's ship has docked, and the um, you are about you are you are informed by one zero and one one that you are about to be hailed again. In that case, I'll actually transport everybody else from that's on that signal. To the Nighthawk. To the conference room. Unless they have need medical attention. Okay, so that means Bassi, Helsing, Bashir, and mm -hmm. Weakus? That's correct. Oh, okay, let's see how well things work out this time. <laughs> oh god, don't look... Can... Transport Chief needs to be on a coffee break. Okay, so uh, this is going to be a test. Uh, transported test, so you're beaming from not a pad to not a pad. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty four test. Um, control plus engineering, obviously. Um, uh, a, this would be z so Avon Zell could roll, and the ship can assist. Ship is uh, sensors. sensors. Sensors engineering. Difficulty four. Alright, that's one from the ship. <clears throat> Who's rolling um, Zell? Uh, I've got it. Okay. <clears throat> uh, sorry, what was it again? Control engineering. Uh, control engineering. Uh, you need three successes. Can I use momentum? You can, have, you can use as much momentum as you have available. Right. I will can wonder. anybody assist her? Afraid not. Uh, ship has already done so. Can I, uh, well, assist with advisor if we needed a reroll? Um, yeah, I'll let that happen. Threaten her with her performance evaluation. Uh, yeah, so. Um, yeah, you would need to force the reroll there, Captain. Go for it. And is that a full reroll or just the zeros? Just the zeros. All right. Roll, roll two more dice there, please, Zell. Okay. That's enough. <clears throat> okay. So, we are going from planet side to conference room. Oh. Conference room. Where? You guys aren't here. You guys are hidden. And these guys all show up. Of course, I'd paste them like that because I am GM. 
I am GM. Someone should write a rap about that. I think that'd be cool. Okay. So, just as uh, High Proctor Weakus activates the... Or goes to punch in the, ne the necessary activation sequence of the video broadcasting system, um, Bashir and Helsing, you feel the uh, familiar and welcome feel of the tingle of the transporter wash over you. Uh, both Bassi and Weakus start and um, look um, are startled looking around really really quickly and you find yourselves in the conference room where Bassi uh, immediately gets Weakus behind her brings up her sparking arc weapon in a defensive position. I hold up my hands to her and say, Re relax. I don't know exactly what's going on, but just relax, please. And I'm assuming now's the time Sengral enters? <laughs> I would actually would have enjoyed already being in the room sitting down. <laughs> okay. If that's okay. okay. Yeah, I'm in the corner is away from everybody. I got you, Captain. Yeah, I got yeah you. he's standing in the darkened corner. Yes. All I right. would be honored if you would join us. <laughs> Good afternoon, weak ass. No, weak ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, with, with Bassy arcing her stun weapon, I'm just going to say, well, please, there's no need for that. I assure you. That even though we've just had a bunch of difficult times with each other, that you're among friends here. Hi, Proctor. I believe you called for me. This is my sponsor. Uh, it obviously takes a little while for him to come to terms. Um, both he and, before responding to you, both he and Bassy are going to take a skitter over to the uh, windows, look out over the orbit of their planet. So this is space. The, the final, final frontier. frontier. <laughs> <laughs> I do say that in character. <laughs> you know, Captain, the uh, the Astral Merchants Guild have, have had a standing offer to bring me up in one of their ships for the longest time. I've never taken them up on it. Seems fate has other plans for me. And he takes off his top hat and genuflects at the waist in a bow. I'm High Proctor Weakest, but I'm assuming you already know that. And who are you? Well, my name is Luxor Arthur Sengrel. I am indeed the captain of this vessel. And you are already familiar with my crew. He nods. Yes. As our situation is complicated. But they have proven themselves to be good men and honorable, and I can assure you that they have been treated well. Have my have the same kin or has the same circumstances been extended to my citizens? Before we talk about that, I do just want to get one thing clear. I'm we listening. do I'm gonna lay all my cards out on the table right now. I've been listening to you and your transmissions. Not only... I, I'm aware of how well you've treated my crew. And I'm aware of how confused and concerned you are about the safety of your citizens. But, to be quite honest, we are here, as my, as my first officer has informed you before, primarily on a mission of exploration. We're not your enemies. They've already told you about the Draven and the other adversaries that we've encountered out here. And the reason why I'm telling you all this is because my, our interference and our, uh, us revealing ourselves in this manner to you breaks our, one of our most highest laws. I see. And I'm assuming that there would be repercussions for those who have broken such laws? There most definitely is. And with that, I must require your assistance before we can move any further. I see. And how can, how would you like us to assist? 
Well, typically, this law that we call the Prime Directive prohibits us in getting involved in alien cultures without without their primary permission. It's invasive, and our presence has the ability to damage the development of your planet. But in this case, considering the what has happened so far, a majority of the damage has been done. So I'm not here to turn anything back. I'm here to move forward. Together. So I'm only going to ask you, with everybody else that you already know that is involved and is aware of the away team, and the people that are here, the people of the personnel of my ship that are have been involved in your planet, I simply ask you to keep hold of this information to a time and to keep it contained. Eventually, it's going to get out. I understand that. But before that does, there's things that you need to know. Uh, Afterwards, after you, if you agree to my terms, you could have your crew. But note that I don't do this as a threat. They are not prisoners. If you ask for the return, they will be returned to you. But the situation is complicated, which is why I need you to agree to mine first. Bassie's uh, face twists into a bit of a s- snarl as she begins processing what you've been saying. Um, proc- the high proctors just... His face goes rather serene as he ponders... Now, Captain, I don't see any reason why I shouldn't be taking up you up on your offer. After all, you shouldn't worry too much about damage done. We, This is not the first time that we have met others beyond our own species. Indeed, we do enjoy learning about others. It can teach us how to be better people ourselves. And if you manage to pick up one or two of our morals, so be it. I uh, don't see any reason why I shan't accept your offer and do my best at con- containing communication. Or at least letting them know that you aren't as bad as certain individuals might claim you would be. I will personally take full responsibility for this situation. It was my actions that brought us out. But I would still think that we will both benefit from a team investigating the obelisk and helping decipher the information. It would serve both of us extremely well. Yes, that was something that Ovis was championing quite heavily. He's... And I'm sure Varillan would be very pleased to do so as well. Captain, from... Upon return, upon safe return of my, civ- of my citizens, I would like to put forth a plea for assistance. If you are willing to continue to assist us in our, in our business. This, by now you are aware of the Savior obelisk and how it has created a moat protecting us from the outside threats i'm told that those cybernetic beings called the borg were have been dealt with long ago and i am prepared to order for the moat's decommissioning however moat is not coming down and is continuing to expand I regret any damage to any neighboring neighboring, uh, planets it has already encroached upon and hope to stem it further. I can be inclined to agree. I I see no reason to actually prohibit our assistance. Very well. Now, may I please see my crew? Or, not my crew. May I please see my citizens? Certainly. Come this way. And I will lead them to sickbay. Alright. I I hope that, at this point, they, their memories have actually been removed. We will find out. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Okay, let's see who is coming Before down. I head there, I actually am going to calm them. <laughs> I want them to tell me if they are or not. 
not if, clear if as day. We'll, we'll take a tour of the ship while we go around. If no, no, this, for now, we're taking them to the holodeck. Let me show you. <laughs> yeah, okay. My new this protocols is, are good. This is where we karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand what you're carrying, but it certainly ate a tune. Uh, um, Joy will report back that two of the two of the individuals have uh, already undergone the uh, re the memory enogramic um, program purge. Uh, they were just beginning to work on the third. In that case, I'll just can. I want to put a duck blind up in sick bay, but they could still save the other two. I do. Okay. One that no one's gonna break, but they can see still see the other two scorpion. Okay. As long as they don't stand up. <laughs> My antenna just droop for no reason. <laughs> okay. So. Okay. It's mighty crowded in this here sick bay as several large individuals uh, enter. Uh, currently under. Th- now, let's see, Miss Joy is on the other side of the duck blind, trying to work peacefully. Um, whereas the other, who is that one? Duck blinds, privacy wall, et cetera, et cetera, whatever. Yep, pretty much. There we go. So both Cathrice and Virilin are still, un- uh, they are unconscious. But they are sli- resting soundly, so they can be revived if you wish. I say to I the high pressure. And on cues, Zin applies a fairly sizable dosage of uh, stimulants to both of them, and they awake rather groggily. And they sort of s- come to, and you know, the beds are made for humanoid individuals, so these guys were rather clumsy in writing themselves. But eventually they find themselves upright by their beds, and they both um, genuflect in uh, respect upon seeing the High Proctor. Proctor. High Proctor. Where are we? What has happened here? Weakest just says, rest now. You've been through an ordeal. I believe that this gentleman over here can explain things. And he points back to Sengral. I should ask, is uh, Bashir and or Helsing with them? Uh, Unless the captain says otherwise, I'm following. Yeah, I still do need He's not going to let me out of sight right now. I'm not. <laughs> okay. Um, but in any case, I'll respond to the Scorpi that you were through quite an ordeal at the Avalon. We definitely did see that you became injured. And considering that we had our own people down there, while we were trying to retrieve them, we retrieved you guys instead. You did have minor injuries that we didn't need to take care of, but you're in good chance now. You could have your own personal doctors check you guys out later. Virilin, what the last thing I remember, I was administering the right to call the device to cease, to cease functioning. Then I I don't know something. He looks at Catrice, who basically nods silently as she's trying to process things in her own head. Hi, Proctor. There is still one person that still requires medical attention after that's said and done. And if there's any, if you need any help locating the rest of your citizens, believe me, I don't mind assisting. This ship does have advanced sensors enough. So if you have identities that you still need to be tracked for one reason or another, I'll be glad to help, but we don't need to retrieve them. You could send your own guards or security personnel to take care of that. If you so prefer. He nods. I don't believe. I believe that these three were the three that I seek. And he wanders up to each one and uh, talks to them quickly, ensuring that they are indeed as well as they think they should be. Uh, Roughly ten minutes go by, and um, you you get a quick double tap on your comm badge from Scarlet. 
who's operating under the duct blind on the other side, saying that everything is done and Jakaris is once again ready for uh, public viewing. Well, in that case, send him out. Uh, no reason to keep these people waiting. There is a pneumatic hiss as the um, as the uh, heavy plastic that has been separating the surgical bay from the rest of sick bay retracts into the walls, and Scarlet is um, uh, Scarlet stands beside her patient, and she says, "He does need about ten minutes to recover. We can transport him by uh, by stretcher if ness if you'd like him back, or we, he can recover here." Weakest says, I think given the circumstances that a speedy return to the surface is in order. Very well. And she she retrieves a um, uh, hover stretcher from underneath the surgical table and herself and Zin sort of dead man roll Jakaris on it, being careful to stick, stay away from his stinger. Well, in any case, I Proctor, there is one more significant matter that we need to discuss concerning the people. And in this case, I'd like to lead him to the morgue to, with the Scorpio body that we do have here. Oh, yes. And I don't have a set piece for the morgue, so we'll just go to... We'll just go here. We have a morgue? Yeah. All, sh all, the, all ships have a small morgue, because... Sadly, death does happen in duty. So, uh, you in space, no one yeah. can hear you. No. <laughs> <laughs> you um, arrive in the morgue, and the high proctor doesn't need prodding to understand what this is all about. I uh, see. Uh, one of one of a uh, one of your crew did tell Bassie that they had met some deceased Scorpio along the way. Is this? where you've been keeping him, or her. It is, until we had the ability to return them to your society. Hmm. I see. Uh, thank you so much, Captain. We will see that uh, this member is returned to the um, Astral Merchants Guild for proper uh, disposal. Even though that's, well, with you, within your burial rights, I do have to point out that this specific individual was genetically modified when we encountered them. Most likely by the Draven. Uh, he nods. I, well, that is not my call to make. I will return the body and see what can be done. Well, Hi Proctor. You have your people. You have the ability to leave whenever you want. But you still understand my predicament. Are you still willing to assist us? Of course. It has been a very rocky uh, con meeting of the species, but you and I both are decent members, or decent folk. I believe we can... I am... I, am, I will assist you to the best of my abilities. I do appreciate that. And I still, when we carry out this joint operation, I still would like to ask for your discretion and keeping this matter as small as possible. Of course. If, after all, it would do my society no good to, if it was found out that we needed outside help to keep one of our most sacred artifacts running. Well, if you wish, we could return you and the rest of the Scorpii to the surface. You can either go back through the you could either return through transport or we could have a physical shuttle set you down into the, set you down back to the planet's surface but I must warn you it can't land in an occupied city I do believe I do believe that these transporters would be worth experiencing once more they're far smoother than anything that the astral merchants fly I do hate being off the ground well I understand that in any case, you're free to return to your office and your people, and I will be along shortly to talk about the next step of our adventure. 
Mm-hmm. I'll bid you good day, Captain. I will see you around. And with that, he and the others beam back to the surface, leaving... And within short order, you receive word from the surface that the rest <coughs> of the Starfleet personnel are available to transport back. Well, I'll go ahead and uh, get them all back. All right. So, Captain, what would you like to do next? I am immediately going to call a... Uh, we'll gather all the senior officers and meet in the conference room. Okay, conference room. On the way up, I stop by the armory and get a, a phaser. Did we, ever, did we get our tricorders and phasers and all that equipment back? They were returned no. with... They were re okay. re returned with the rest of the Starfleet officers. Okay, good. <laughs> I just like that. I re equipped so myself. <laughs> Before we get to the conference room, I need a facer. <laughs> um... <laughs> I can't be out of uniform. <laughs> okay, so we'll have all them. We'll have the Shran and Coox for now. All right, Captain, take it away. Well. Sometimes the simplest solution is the easiest one. I guess we all tend to overcomplicate over complicate things. And sometimes we leap before we look. So. <laughs> I think everybody knows what's on my mind right now. But there's no need to say it. We're all back. The rest of the crew is here. And we still have another mission on this planet that we need to take care of. So, in that case, Commander Helsing. Preparing a way to. Ah, uh, sir. Mission? Well, we are going to go investigate this obelisk. With the help of the Scorpion. Yeah. Take any other personnel that you need, take any items that you require, and take any shuttle that you request. Um. Is it covert? In the open? For the nature right now, it's going to be covert. You and a small team of Scorpii will go investigate the obelisk together, and whatever comes your way, you're going to be able to handle it. Hi, right, sir. Well, Let's I'm going see. to ask all the other uh, department chiefs if there's anything in particular that they want to stock up on or repair or get to, you know, get another second glance at if they were away on the planet. Otherwise, I'm going to ask everybody to return to the general duties. Uh, Except Commander Bashir. Coox uh, co re co re requests uh, permission to uh, join the away team. He would like to s learn more about the Scorpi. <laughs> That's uh, granted. That's also C Lieutenant Commander Helsing's call to me. I was looking through records. Who said he said he wanted to come? Coox, uh, a.k.a. Chief Medical Officer. Coox. Can do Definitely need to come along, Doc. Um, the sh um, Lieutenant Commander Thashran is wondering if everyone is going to be back in time for Christmas dinner. No. His entire <laughs> uh, cooking. Uh, oh, that's right. It was Christmas Eve. Uh, uh, Thashran said that he. Uh, Thashran replies, well, "I came up with. I found this reindeer recipe. Apparently, something about Blitzen and." Either way, it was going to be very tasty. I apologize. It was like you're just going to be working the night shift tonight. Or the day shift. I don't even know what time it is anymore on this planet. Can you put it in stasis? He nods. Okay. So, who's going back to planet? That is uh, Helsing. Um... I coax. Mm -hmm. Want to take Hanara from security? That'll be their second activation. Okay. Oh, I'm totally going to interrupt. I yep. forgot to mention. I do want Erkin in command, Red. Oh. Does he know? I mean, I'm going to tell him just to get dressed. He doesn't know yet. <laughs> Make sure, oh. make sure you let him know that he's out of uniform. Uh, <laughs> okay, so that... Uh, sorry, it's let's go with other away team first of all. 
Sorry, Erkin, you're fairly quiet, I think. Or am I just hearing myself? Sir? Hello? Hello? Oh, he's nope. getting dressed. Never mind. Okay, so uh, who is coming from security? So I got Hanara from security. Did anybody else want to play a security character? We need an engineer. Engineers, probably. We have engineers a doc. science guys might be a half decent idea. Yep. And unfortunately, our best science guy can't come. Mm, shame. Uh, let's see. He can just see what he wanted so bad, but can't touch it. Nope. Is Lev uh, Ocancor any good for this type of thing? Um, let's see. So, uh, other folks that might work out would be... Uh, let's see. Where did, um... Galactic History, oh. Astrophysics, Astrometrics, that's Skelk. Could work. Um, Zobet has got Archaeology, Researching, um, Temporal, temporal Mechanics. mechanics. Yeah. <laughs> that might work. That sounds good. Uh, yeah. So, Skelk and Zobet? Uh, Raddy has both. Mining Equipment. Yeah. And Okay, so... I bet she doesn't have her, her glaive anymore. Oh, no, that was returned. Turns out it's not one of theirs. Oh, awesome. Yep. <clears throat> okay, so that was Hanara. Who was... It was... Who's he? Hanara, Urkin, Coox. Oh, Urkin's going. Okay. And if anybody wants to, wants to Zobet, Skelk, either or. Okay. Uh, yeah, so... Bashir and uh, Sengral, do you guys have characters you want to play? I'll go ahead and uh, play Zobet. Okay. Zobet. Yeah, I'll take Skilk. Zobet and Skilk. Cool. Okay. I'll fix their tokens eventually. I think Correct. that's everyone. So let's go back down here to the Preserver Obelisk. We're just going to do a clean slate of people here. Uh, what shuttle are you guys bringing down? Spectre? No. <laughs> hey, my first real away mission I'm in charge of, so definitely want to go on hot. <laughs> With pleasure, sir. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Okay, in a in a something that reeks of deja vu, uh, you find your, you land the shuttlecraft down by the pyramid, or not the pyramid, the obelisk, and waiting for you are three very familiar faces. Uh, Virilin and Jakaris are ready to assist, whereas Kathris is looking at you with a sense of skepticism. Actually, and for the sake of it, I think Ovis is going to join too because he's also very interested. There we go. And at this point, I'm going to make this an extended task to figure this thing out. Um, hey, hey, Erkin, do you know? Have any idea about anything about the obelisk or anything else that might be not, useful? Not, not particularly. Um, right. I do know a bunch about ancient ancient technologies but i'm afraid this is even newer than some of the ancient technologies that i know of god it wasn't was hoping you might be able to help out skeleton zobat oh i can help out with anything whether this is not a guarantee sir oh i understand red looks good on you by the way i've always been in red sir thought you were in gold uh nope helm officers are red Ah, um, well, never mind. I must be temporary colorblind. Could okay. be a, a, a brain bug coming back, sir. You, you <laughs> never know. Do you remember your sister? <laughs> what about my sister? I was your sister. <laughs> oh, sister's doing good. Thank you for asking. It's tough being away from family this time of the year, but. We understand. Your Thank you for asking. Are so illogical. 
<laughs> You've got really quiet again, Bashir. That was kind of on purpose, but okay. I said, right. your, hol <laughs> your holidays are quite illogical. Yeah, that they are. Uh, all right, so the task, or this is going to be a work track 19, uh, resistance of 3, difficulty of 4, and a magnitude of 3. Uh, various things that can be done would be uh, engineering to figure out how it actually taps into the, the uh, powers or the planets. Um, science would work just as well. Um, yeah, those would be the main ones. Um, I could use... Um, I don't actually know which one would work best for history. I should look that up. But yeah, let's think engineering science to start with. And one person can take the lead, one person can assist. Oh, sorry. I won't tell. I was gonna. I would totally. Yeah, you. You're more than likely yeah, should no. lead that. Yeah. I absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Let me do my. What would you say? This is an insight science role. Uh, yeah. Insight science. Eventually, we can do control science once you figure things out. And I should say this is a scene change, so you lose one momentum. Gotcha. <clears throat> And that is, well, that's three successes. You need one more success. And there it is. Okay. Um, if you could, if Zobet could please roll me six challenge dice. Okay. Uh, that is... Uh, that is is enough to make one point off the work track, or you could spend momentum to re-roll zeros or st um, do a penetrate penetration. Ignore some resistance. Let's take care of some penetration here. Okay. So that is um, let's see, resistance three becomes resistance one. Uh, still not enough for work for a breakthrough, but you do make some progress on the task. 16. Okay, so um, initial scans uh, with the assistance of the, D the necessary DNA and the uh, vocalizations prompted by the prayers um, indicate that the this is indeed a... It requires both physical and subharmonics in order to fully function properly. Sort of a uh, dual factor authentication style. Uh, much of the inner workings are still quite alien. Uh, even though Starfleet has had the chance to look at a preserver artifact in the past, uh, a lot of it is still very, very far beyond what Starfleet science can do. Um, still, you're able to at least make progress, and you think you're able to figure out at least how the thing turns on and off. Um, how it actually connects to the planet yet, or any of that stuff, still needs a bit of bit more tinkering on that front. I'll go ahead and continuously relay all of this to Lieutenant Commander Helsing, and ask for permission if I could also relay this information to the Scorpi. No, by all means. Unless the captain doesn't want information sharing. Oh, the captain does. I just want to make sure that we're not uh, cross-contaminating anything else again. <laughs> Dotting the eyes oh. and crossing my... Um, as, as, they so, as they like to say. Crossing the I's and dotting the T's. Got it. Virilin, uh, as you relay the information, Virilin s still seems a bit skeptical. You see him holding on to his uh, scriptures all the tighter, um, as in protecting them for some reason. Ovis, on the other hand, is scribbling like a madman. 
taking a, whatever words come out of your mouth, he's writing down for future use. <clears throat> At this point, you can roll again. I will definitely do that and continue taking the lead here because I got, for some reason, totally <laughs> blanked on how work tracks worked for one, for a second. <laughs> my, I'm sorry. Uh, Even uh, though we just did it like earlier. We have brain farts. It's, yeah, it is what it, it is. Happens. And whoever I'm like, I did my rolls. I'm done here. <laughs> okay. That's not as good. Yeah, need uh, three successes, which I think might be impossible. Wasn't Skulk or somebody else assisting? Uh, I think it was Zobat the first time. Can Zobat make three successes? Oh. Uh, well, well, both Zobat. Yeah. Must have been Skulk. Or Cap. So who. We You're have, doing so uh, bad. So, yeah, oh, we do oh, have Scout here as yeah. the other science officer. Oh, okay. So what? getting goofed up. Oh yeah, sorry. Zobat assisted pre Zobat last time. Okay, that was weird. Um, so who uh, is? I got it. Okay. Insight uh, science. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so it's just a massive brain fart in all of our parts. We didn't even yeah. notice. Yeah. That's all right. Well, that's, uh, that is three yeah. successes. Um, I will take. Th I will let that succeed at cost because I, th I have ideas for how to spend threat later. Um, so if Zobet could roll me six challenge dice, please. So bad. So bad. Okay, that's four. That'll only be one point towards the work track so that's not a breakthrough yet actually it's impossible to even get a breakthrough even if you spend the last couple points of momentum but that's fine so we're now at 15 on the work track yeah this thing is not giving up a heck of a lot uh, in fact, you're pretty sure that at this point it's deploying some sort of security safeguards to prevent uh, more intrusive scans. Uh, it appears to be deploying some sort of randomization field that is dis that is uh, messing up your tricorder signals, something fierce. Um, it's difficult to get a clear a clear reading, so you are going back to the old-fashioned way of figuring things out manually with fingers, eyes, and a uh, pad for taking notes. Uh, this is taking much longer than originally inten intended. And so far, there's not much else going on outside, but the sun is beginning to set. Commander... Although I am quite certain that we do have the ability to, I'm we do have the ability to crack this. I do. It may be prudent to actually call Commander Bashir here to assist. Roger. I'll ask the captain but first. Since music seems to be a key, do you think interpretive dance, <laughs> Lieutenant? Think that might help. All right, let me go up. I'll come back up to the to the uh, Nighthawk. Uh, Nighthawk, Captain Grawl, Commander Helsing. <laughs> Sangrel here, go ahead. Sir, we could probably use Commander Bashir down here. This is taking a little bit longer, a little bit more complex. He knows at least the history of this. He would definitely be an asset. It's not much... <laughs> Not much of a punishment, Helsing, if I'm sending him back down there, but I could understand the situation that you're in. Well, it we could brute force it, but it's just going to take time. 
I don't know, Elias, and we don't have that kind of time. I'll go ahead and send them back down to you. Roger, sir. Okay. We will be waiting. Okay. Cap or Commander Bashir. He said he was going to be right back. Okay. So he'll be back momentarily. Um, Erkin, what? You, because you have our ancient technology. This would be right up your alley. I do, but I'm I'm not particularly skilled in science or engineering. Oh, no, indeed not. Okay. <laughs> that have you tried to touch it yet? Oh, I will like I will crawl all over it if I'm allowed. But <clears throat> more qualified people seem to be a little closer than I. <laughs> I am. Yeah. Uh, sadly, touching it does not give you any desired effects. It's just it's cold to the touch. There's a small pulsing, very faint pulsing rhythm underneath it, but overall it's stone cold. Uh, if it reacts to music, I'll sing softly to it. It doesn't seem to react quite that way. Okay. Well, I'm out of ideas, sir. Say la vie. And the Scorpi don't have anything in particular for us? I mean, the Scorpi are more than welcome to pass along what they know but what they know is in the form of a prayer book with some very basic technical diagrams that appear to have been drawn, copied copied again, copied with errors, errors then magnified oh my god, why is this paint by number who thought connect the dots was a, per was a perfectly valid uh, technical documentation method it works not well, but it works. Mm hmm Pretty much. Okay. Um, while we wait for um, Bashir to get back, because it'll take him a little while to get realize that he's not being punished at the moment. Um, <laughs> I think he's here. Is he? He's here. Oh, Bash Bashir's Yay. back. Uh, Bashir, you were just uh, getting used to being punished on the ship when the captain came down, told you to put your uniform back on and get down to the surface. Ah! Okay. <laughs> you see a little video image of Commander Helsing coming up, going, Commander Bashir, you're our only hope. Then it flickers <laughs> and it repeats on a constant loop. Yeah, <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, um, Bashir, you're now down on the surface. I don't suppose you could give me an insight or control science, and someone could assist. The difficulty is four, and you have one momentum left. Okay. I'm sorry, every time you send that to me, I, I see the little let it go button and I start humming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, all right, let me pull myself up again. Oh, do you actually get a notification when I steal your momentum? Yeah, you do. I do. It says, like, uh, I can deny you or it says let it go. Oh, it's, ah. Okay, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And so if you have ancient his, ancient technology, history, power systems... I got my, arche uh, I got my archaeology, so... That'll I'll work. And you said there's one momentum left? Yeah, one momentum. Right. And you also have determination you could spend if you want to. Okay, that's two successes. Uh, you could spend your determination to re-roll the zeros, or you could pray that someone assists you and gets a critical. Okay, we will... Hey, Z Zobite, give him a hand. Okay. Uh, Sangral, if you can roll Zobet, please. Absolutely. <clears throat> Well, look at that. Way to go. Okay. Wow. Nice. Uh, Bashir, if you could roll me six challenge dice, please. You have no momentum left, but you could give me threat. Wow. 
Okay, that is six. Uh, resistance of three, so that would be three points towards the work track. Not enough for a breakthrough unless you choose to give me threat to either reroll those zeros or add um, piercing. I'll give you threat to reroll those zeros. All right. Roll two challenge dice then. Would you look at that? Uh, six, seven, eight. That is five against it. That is enough for one breakthrough. <clears throat> okay, so that is... So it becomes difficulty three and then magnitude two and... Work track with ten. Okay. So it's almost imperceptible. Uh, it actually took takes a few scans with your own device and then a second to correlate but you're a finally able to figure out how this thing is gener pulling the power it needs um, and the answer is uh, several um, uh, yeah, nano cabling barely two barely more than two molecules thick uh, which appears to be stretching out from this obelisk to various points on the planet you know, you obviously can't scan further than whatever the range of your tricorder is at the moment. But this, assume you're able to see at least a couple connections to local dilithium fields. And these dilithium fields appear to be cracked as if their uh, power is, and they're no longer able to pro provide the energy that this thing needs. The device itself appears to be working as it should. There's just not enough power for it to do its job. Can we... Commander, do you think the ship might be able to help if we could have results going to the ship? Might be able to process things faster. Game wise, I'm trying to see if we can get an assist from the ship as well. That's a good idea. Um, if you had the momentum to spend, I'd let you use that as an advantage. Um, alas, the momentum rich early game has sadly petered out. Probably because the GM gave you such a hard task at the right at the end. <laughs> well, at least maybe for the future. Mm hmm. Okay, so with the determination, is that like when we use one of our values to bring in a determination, mm -hmm. is that where we can activate like basically something game changing and basically like, you know, am I right on that? Mm -hmm. uh, sort of. So you can tap a va tag a value and that will add a third dice that rolls a critical. So you'll get two successes immediately. Okay. And where are we at on the work track? Uh, you have ten left, but the task is now only d difficulty three instead of difficulty four. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, I have fascination with the unknown. <laughs> well, this <laughs> is definitely bad. unknown, so that would work. Yeah. So I'm doing a control... All right, control science. Science. Ooh, complication. But that is three successes. So that's a good thing. And who wishes to assist in this fashion? Now you might actually get some momentum out of this. Oh boy, the ship assist at this point or not? Um, I'm afraid I not. Um, so. if you I'm have reaching. The, yeah, if you have the two momentum to spend, I'd let you have that as an advantage. Oh, but, okay, I see what you're talking about. Yeah. But right now it's just ground-based. Can so, Zobet roll again here? Yep, Zobet can roll. 
Could any of the Scorpia assist? I mean, they, they're more than able to do so. Um, I have stats for at least a couple of them. Would you like me to have one of them roll to assist instead? I would suggest the High Priest. Uh, the High Proctor is not here, I'm afraid. Not the... Uh, 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 Varelin? Varelin, yeah. So, okay. Because he was the one that his family has been protecting this for... Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, he will Maybe assist. if we work together. Because it was my whole... Th I broke the Prime Directive so me and him yes. could fix it. What the, uh, whoops. Roll one. I wasn't aware I could do that. That's kind of cool. Uh... Uh, he looks up and down. Uh, he tries to be helpful. He really does. But beyond... Uh, as soon as you go beyond his, what is in his technical manual, he just gets a bit flustered, confused, and a bit indignant. Uh, so you do make the uh, three successes you need there, Bashir. So please roll me six right. challenge dice. <clears throat> Okay, and that is six, so that would be another three against the work track. And it's a bit, it's at this point um, that Hanara, Helsing, and Alec, as you guys are sort of on um, watch duty, uh, your tricorders are beginning to pick up an increased number of Scorpi. Uh, they are keeping their distance, but there are some that are closing in, roughly about a hundred or so signals. Signals. Um, not, oh, yeah. not in any organized fashion. More of, not a mob per se, but a crowd definitely. Um, I walk over to uh, to Caras Catrice and Brill and would you know anything about almost a hundred Scorpi coming to this location at this time of day? They normal. They all look at one another, and they give you their, the Scorpi equivalent of a shrug, which is the lowering of their tail. Um, Ovis and Cathrice volunteer to... Well, so, not Ovis, he's too curious here. Uh, Jakaris and Cathrice volunteer to go and see what's going on and offer you to join them if you'd like. Um, I'll send Hanara. Okay. Okay. Um, Commander Bashir, as they are setting off, you begin to understand more about how this power system appears to work. Um, and more importantly, how it's affecting the crystals. Um, it appears that there's actually a, a malfunction in how the obelisk is dealing with the power. Um, similar to how a a uh, car may backfire if it's poorly calibrated. It appears to be backfiring when it's pulling out energy from the planet. Um, more thorough investigation of the crystalline or the dilithium. <laughs> My eyes got real big when you said crystalline. I was like, oh, nope, that, that, that's, a plot, that's a plot for another uh, day. Yeah, um, okay. <laughs> Uh, the crystalline lattice of the dilithium would indicate that this stuff has actually been depleted for some time. Um, and this crystal, or this obelisk, is now pulling sources from a field that must be further away. But its backfiring is causing these crystals to destruct, or disintegrate is probably a better term for it. <clears throat> Uh, Hanara, um, you are, um, you, Jakaris, and Cathrice encounter a group of individuals, um, all, of all, all, ah, their carapace is all, are all, why am I stuttering? I'm sorry. Breathe. Deep breath. Yep. Their carapaces are, mul co cover the entire spectrum of colors. Uh, their skin color and their genders are likewise as diverse. Um, they all are carrying um, books that they're carrying around similar to that of prayer books, uh, very sacred. They're all 
they all have the symbol of the obelisk and from the obelisk is shine, shines like a beacon uh, the the two scorpi look together look at each other sharing a knowing glance uh, they look at hanara and say looks like word might have gotten out that there's work going on here and the population is very curious to know what we are doing Uh, Hanar will relay that back to Helsing. All right. Is there any way that you can, and he'll relay this through from Hanar back to Jakaris? Can you stall them in any way? How we shall. How try. much of this do you want out to your to your people? As of little what's as going possible. on here? As little as possible. That's what I was. However, we. Sus if you are going to do something, do it quick. And they motion for Hanara to uh, get behind a tree and hide as best as possible while the others continue to do their work. So if Bashir... Um, I wasn't paying attention. That's a new role for you, Bashir? Yes, yeah. Cool. I just did another one, so... That's a good role. Uh, who wants to assist? Somebody wants to assist. Zobrek? Maybe. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Frillin had its chance. Yep. I can see why he had problems getting in. He is far too I... hidebound. <laughs> I think I cut out there. Did someone saying that I'm uh, Zobet's assisting? Or... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Zobet. Yes, please. If Zobet could assist. All right. There you go. There you go. Two momentum for you guys. Yay. Fine. All right. Uh, Bashir, six challenge dice. You know the drill. Oops. Uh, that's zero. <laughs> I got excited. <laughs> Over it. Yeah. Okay. Hanar will be making his way back. Ooh, seven. Nice. Okay. Uh, th currently, that is four against the work track. Um, so you can do this once, once more, or you can apply some uh, that two momentum to piercing and finish the work track off. Yeah, I'll use those two. All right. So not a moment too soon, um, Bashir. You're able to finally gain an understanding of the mole the molecular physics at play here. Um, you have no idea how this thing actually works yet. But you're able to come up with a system to prevent the backfiring from occurring again. Uh, you find and repair a couple um, monomolecular cables back to proper integrity. Um, you take a step back. The obelisk hum becomes slightly more, um, instead of a pulsing rhythm, it now becomes a steady um, background hum as Virilin breaks out in a smile and goes, now that's what I remember. And he takes a, a he literally leaps forward um, asks that you please don't touch the obelisk and he begins his incantations. Um, as he, he motions that you guys should all go back and hide in your shuttle because the people are probably going to want to see this. Absolutely. All right. We pull the Starfleet back and we'll start going back to the shuttle. All right. Uh, just as the doors close and the um, holographic display um, begins the active or the passive camouflage, <clears throat> the obelisk glows from the base all the way to the tip in a bright green and unleashes a beam into the depths of space. There's, oddly enough, there's no extra sound to it, just um, Virilin's chanting. Uh, uh, the beam lasts for approximately 10 seconds, and then the obelisk goes silent, 
and Virilin begins speaking to the assembled that the obelisk has been repaired. The moat is coming down, and once again the Astral Merchant Guild can um, uh, proceed through space as normal, to, the, to which there is a great aplomb and there is much cheering. Ovis just sort of stands quietly while uh, heaps of praise are thrown upon them. And I relay all this to the captain as we've been monitoring. The captain is receiving. Uh, the, the party, uh, the, the festival now around the obelisk will go long into the night. Uh, thankfully, you, the shuttle is parked far enough away that you don't have to actually interfere, and it will happily proceed while you guys remain hidden. Unless you want to try taking off in the middle of all this, because that would be humorous. Well, I look to Commander Bashir, and I say, sorry, sir, but the seatbelt has to stay on, and the can do not take off. We'll wait for it to settle down. As long as nobody comes near us, we're good. Yes, sir. And overall, it lasts until about 3 o'clock in the morning, uh, shipboard time, when everyone departs, and it is safe for you guys to take off again. And when it is safe, we do just that. Mm -hmm. Very well. <laughs> Bored and tired, sir, but home we go. <laughs> and um, we call for Shan to see if he can get that uh, roasted reindeer back out of stasis and warmed up he says he can have the he says that he will use his uh, senior officer pr privilege to get the bar reopened and he will have his new set of tunes apparently something called white Christmas ready to go <clears throat> something I've been dreaming of <laughs> Uh, and just because I find it amusing, while everyone is partying away in the, uh, well, I should ask, Captain, do you wish to partake in the mess hall party? I do. All right. So we're going to have a brief scene in the mess hall while with everyone and anyone who is everyone is at the bar. It has been decorated in Christmassy reds and greens and whites, and a s numerous amount of Christmas carols have been playing. And the GM just accidentally closed everything. He'll be back. Okay. And Togi has his tinsel hat back on. Oh yes, everybody is wondering what's going on with tin with Togi and the tinsel. <clears throat> Apparently, there's two Thashrans. How'd that happen? They're multiplying. Yeah, transporter accident. Yep. <laughs> okay. So this is free form, so you guys talk amongst yourselves. Oh. <laughs> Cat talk stuffing face. <laughs> Cat. Um, I, I, I go over to Werther for just a quick second. Werther is busy throwing out uh, egg rums and eggnogs like there's no tomorrow. Hey, hey Werther, got a quick question for you. Absolutely. Have you heard anybody in the crew been talking about me? <laughs> he saying talks, bad he talks things about me talks behind my back to the captain, maybe? Not to my knowledge. As far as I'm aware, your security staff speak well of you. <clears throat> that, that's what I thought. Yeah. There was so, a couple right. people that think you cheated at darts, but other than that... Everybody has a lucky night. Don't I know it. Now, how much rum would you like in your drink? Oh. Anything else goes inside their butt rum? I mean, you could take it regularly. Just... Rum... With just enough eggnog where you can call it eggnog? Right. Simple splash. Here you go. Lots. And he'll pour a couple splash shots. Splash of eggnog. Yes. <laughs> he'll pour a couple shots of it and pour, ah, shots of rum and then a quick dab of eggnog and slide it across the bar to you. 
thank you very much. And I walk off to go join the rest of the crew. Or senior staff. Mm -hmm. Everyone is gathered. Uh, Chief, uh, CMO Coox raises his glass and, uh, and gives a cheer to the captain for saving their bacon once again. All right, the captain. <laughs> and announces that he's transporting off. He's leaving the ship. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. <laughs> oh, no need to thank me. It's just another illustrious day in the clandestine world of Starfleet Intelligence. Very nice cover story, by the way. Thank you. I think we fooled them, sir. Man, I, I think we fooled them so well that I'm fooling myself right now. <laughs> oh. Yes? I do... Actually, mm, no, that would be bad form for me to do it here. <laughs> Never <laughs> mind. <laughs> okay. Is it leading the karaoke contest? Performance of vows. No. <laughs> <laughs> thought about it but no uh, I've, handed, I've handed you all a card with your score on it <laughs> uh, but I would like to uh, I would assume that I replicated a small box early on beforehand and I still do want to give a little trinket to each one of my uh, members of the senior staff so I mean considering what we've just been through and I would like to say you know thank you so much for uh, you know at least coming this far <laughs> in the journey with us when I was at the academy, I've never necessarily understood the idea of between this Earth holiday, but honestly, that's just my cover story because I'm bad at giving gifts. <laughs> so I just never wanted to participate. <laughs> but in any case, you know, the computer told me that this is something that people generally like. So here you go. Happy Christmas. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And what's in the box? Is it coal? It actually is coal. <laughs> I had a feeling. <laughs> oh, thank, 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 thank you, sir. I need a laugh today. Huh. Oh, the rest of you, <laughs> the rest of you get a. You know, you can ignore your duties for the next few hours, but this makes me funny. This makes me laugh. So in any case, there you go. The Shran, uh, the Shran thought, takes oh. a few seconds and goes, Ooh, with enough pressure, I could turn this into a diamond. I, I could probably do something like that in the engineering. Ooh, if you'll excuse me, Captain, I'm off to turn coal into diamond. They're diamond seeds. <laughs> I pass my call to the commander. Like, I think you might need a few more of these. And then downs like four drinks in a row and gets back to eating. <laughs> uh, mumbling never about had a roof. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was like, no, just mumbling about being a wayfarer and something, something warrior and incoherent drunk babbling. Wayfarer? Warrior? Uh, uh, Tell you later. Par rates, what? <laughs> <laughs> gonna All right. Remember to ask Erkin about that. Uh, GM, mm -hmm. is the Christmas party our last scene for today? No, it's not, because to, uh, first thing in the morning, I'm assuming you're going to want Bashir in your office for his performance review. Oh, I would like to do something before that. But ah. I just want to make, I want to make okay. sure that we're not done playing this out. Not I'm yet. Not here to. Not yet. <laughs> what What would you like to do next? Oh, that's up to everybody else. If nobody else has a scene, I would like a few. Okay. I'm. I'm at this point. It's all up to you guys. So. No okay, scene cool. for me. Just reading books. I have security tapes to review to see if. If I can catch anybody talking about me. <laughs> about me? <laughs> <laughs> Computer activate uh, my name in every conversation. Search parameters. Yeah. 
Oh, jeez. Well, I'd actually like to tap Lieutenant Commander Helsing in his quarters. Okay. Uh, how far mm-hmm. after the party is this going to happen? Maybe like two or three hours. Okay. So I'm pretty deep into the search right now, then. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go here. All right, uh, Helsing, you're at your desk, and there's a chime at the door. Come in. Man, I hope you're not fighting too hard tonight. Oh, no. No, sir. Welcome. And I kind of hit screensaver real quick on the... <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have those, you know, the guys are playing games and it'll pull up a spreadsheet. So I'll immediately pull up a game or something. Oh, no, sir. Just kind of taking a little downtime to decompress. You know, there's a holodeck for that. <laughs> well, I've just, you know, everybody has gone through a number of events on this ship, but I have to tell you that you specifically, I don't imagine this ship ever running without you. Contrary to what others may whisper. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. I do, That's... I, I do try. <laughs> that, that indeed being the case. I think I gave you the wrong box at the uh, in the mess hall earlier. Oh, no, sir, yeah. it's, it's all right. Well, I mean, I know. I thought it was going to be funny, but it I seems that I actually didn't misplace your present. So out of the, uh, I'm going to take out another small box behind my back, and I'm going to present it to uh, Helsing. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. It's... I didn't think about giving gifts this year. It's their thing going on. It's sad to say, but it did slip my mind. I appreciate it. Yeah, oh, gonna... I look at it and give that look. Do I open it now? I... Yeah, you, you open it right now. I open it right now. Pick and inside, up the lid just a little bit. And inside, it is definitely going to be another pip. Sir, thank you. I appreciate it. This is an honor well considering that crew evaluations have almost come to an end I only find it fitting that we make sure I make sure that I give you a reason to stay around here for good I I never thought about leaving (laughs) well congratulations Commander Helsing (laughs) I sir appreciate it thank you one more thing not only is this position permanent, considering the events of what has happened and what has transpired, Commander Bashir has been put on a temporary leave. In this case, I trust that you have the ability to completely fulfill his duties as first officer, correct? I would to serve, sir, wherever you need me. Well, that's excellent. And in any case, you have a bunch of performance reports to look at tomorrow, and you have to coordinate with the other heads of departments. Roger, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Don't mention it. I just gave you more work. Uh, I know, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, toodles. Merry Christmas. Consider this my gift to you. I. <laughs> so after I leave mm-hmm. I'd like them to be I'd like there to be one more thing I want there to be a chime at Commander Helsing's uh, terminal at his computer station Okay, and it's going to be a Crap. letter from his sister okay totally saying I'm so glad you weren't fired smile P.S. Love the captain. <laughs> Abuse of ship systems for personal pleasure is the captain's prerogative, I guess. Absolutely. 
Uh, hey, it's an intelligence ship. <laughs> wouldn't expect anything less. Uh, what but next? I do, Sorry. I do notice that as I'm going through the the search of everything, it'll be into the captain's quarters or wherever the captain's around. All of a sudden, everything will cut out. So somehow he's able to cut off all the cameras. I make a note of that. Again, captain's prerogative. Okay, uh, what's next, Captain Singral? Well, I actually will call Commander Bashir to the ready room. Okay, it's the next day. Everyone is slightly hungover. But that is how it is. Ready room. Slightly. Alex has not <laughs> Some... been seen. <laughs> Some pilots are still drunk. <laughs> That's why they invented autopilots. Yeah, Urkin is flying the ship from a tablet from his bunk. (laughs) Okay, uh, Commander Bashir, you have been summoned for your... to the captain's ready room. Captain? I'm not there. (laughs) There we go. (laughs) Captain. Come. I I stand at attention with my arms by my back. Well, by all means, come in. So, Commander, what do you think is going to happen here today? I take full responsibility, whatever you feel is fitting. Well, that's an inappropriate answer. Don't you think I deserved an explanation? Absolutely. You asked what I thought was going to happen. Not helpful. Commander? Captain? I feel that I I made a choice. Plain and simple. I would like to point out that over the last few months, we have detracted from our actual mission. And, And with the technology and possibility of this obelisk i thought that it would go back to something along the lines of finding information about the book and i made a judgment call plain and simple when making contact with the priests i was a little overzealous i agree but if i may speak freely you should have seen Lieutenant Commander Helsing's face. And, um, you do not speak freely. <laughs> Continue. A chime goes off on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Captain, I apologize. I'm sorry what I did, but I don't, I'm not. The information that we gained from this, and I feel that it was worth whatever punishment you see fit. My personal goals of this is to explore space, to experience the front. That's why I joined Starf. I feel that Our mission is to meet these other species and find out why the Borg passed them by. And I felt it was the right call. And it was obviously turned into more than a little bit of an incident. And I'm sorry that it went as far as it did. But if I were to go back, I would make the same choice. That's where we have a difference of opinion. Bashir. Let me tell you exactly what's happened. And let me tell you what's going to happen right now. What you did, and the actions that you took, led to an egregious violation of the Prime Directive. It led to the away team's discovery. It led to the Nighthawk having to take emergency rec- emergency measures needed to contain 
your mistake. It put the away team in danger, and it put our greater mission and the expanse in danger. It doesn't matter what you feel that our primary mission is supposed to be. You are aware of our mission, and I have never actually kept any information from you. What we are here to do now, and our mission to this planet, was set in stone, and it did not necessitate it did not necessitate you reveal at that time in any way, shape, or form. It's absurd. And the very fact that you think that you're justified in this, and that you have the and that you would be able to do it again, honestly has me more concerned than the damage that you've caused. This is consistent what I mean, honestly, man. Where do you think you actually are? This isn't a standard Federation vessel. You're Starfleet intelligence. I expect you to actually act with a little bit more decorum than necessary. But instead, you just felt like it was necessary to just blow all caution to the wind. And that's something that I can't have. Yes, Captain. So from here on out, from this point in time until I deem it necessary, you're suspended from your duties and you're confined to your quarters. Lieutenant Commander Housing will be taking over as your duties of first officer. You're in, you are still chief science officer and your, and your science expertise will still be called upon when necessary. But you no longer enjoy the ranks and privileges as you once did. Yes, Captain. Dis you're dismissed. I nod and walk out. All right. Does anybody else have anything they wish to do? No. Nope. I start polishing my resume. <laughs> Write a letter to my sister. Your real sister. The real one. <laughs> uh, very well. Then on that note, thank you all for playing. Uh, thank you all for listening. I will cut the stream. Players, feel free to stick around. And because we missed last fr last Thursday's session, we will actually be tuning in again next week. So that would be November the 21st at this regular time. So on behalf of myself and my players, thank you all. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye.